Hey, AW Hating Bots, it's the podcast following Lucha. Where are the lore keepers of Lucha Underground? And every week we describe an episode and the lore of it. And then we talk about the wrestling that happened of that week of the episode. And then we talk about wrestling for this week. I'm your host, Steven. And over there is JC. Also, How are you doing today, also man? your host. I'm doing quite well. Um, awesome. Steven, we recorded five minutes of this podcast uh, without yeah. your audio. So we, we had to run it back. So this is really sad. This is really sad no, news. It never oh. happened. Oh, it never happened. We're live, pal. No, my God. You're so right. You're so right. Hey guys, it's following Lucha, or the Lore Keepers of Lucha Underground. We're going to talk about current events, we're going to talk about a random week in 2015, but most importantly, we are going to talk the lore um, of Lucha Underground. Steven, very exciting. you, very you asked exciting. me how I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing quite alright, how are you? Oh yeah, <laughs> me? Dude, I, I got the new W2K game, Yo. and I I haven't like played like, I, I like the amount of matches I actually played is probably like less than 10. Mm-hmm. But like the amount of people I make or like download is oh, just a lot. The customization, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This yeah. Is the fun I don't know. This is I, I don't think game. playing the game is actually fun. I think just watching like yeah. Bob being up towards like the best part. It of really it. is. Yeah. Specifically that match. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. Is good word. I'm so happy to, see, to hear that. I see that you're also wearing your new Cody Rhodes T-shirt as well. Yeah, my Cody Reynolds shirt. Isn't it sick? Actually, his name isn't Cody Reynolds anymore. He changed his last name legally to Rhodes. Did he really? I learned that the other day. Yeah. When? It's Cody Reynolds Rhodes now, apparently. I don't know when, but apparently that's the thing, <laughs> which I find so funny. What the fuck? I mean, it's not as egregious as fucking like Ultimate Warrior, you know? <laughs> It's it's a little bit more. It's me, Ultimate Warrior. Hell is that your first yeah. name? Your last name? I don't know. I don't either. I don't either. Um, but does, does it go by Warrior or Ultimate sometimes? I imagine on government documents. Name? Yeah. Um, yeah. That's really unfortunate. Poor, Poor guy. Warrior. Poor guy. Absolutely. Not so, really. No. It's a pretty. It's a pretty epic change of him. Yeah. Like, no. Pretty, honestly, pretty I was considering making the change myself as well. He just did it before me, yeah. which is I didn't want to be like a copycat. Have you so. ever heard of that theory where he he actually died like early on in his career and they got replaced by some dude? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> so apparently there's a theory of the Ultimate Warrior where um the original one died, like I think like a few years in his run or like Who what what run? Like the WWE um, the original, run? The, yeah, the Royder run, right? Where he's like gigantic, right? Uh-huh. And then when the when he left and came back as like a skinny dude because he got off the, the juice, uh -huh. um, there was a theory that, hey, this warrior isn't my warrior. The old one died. Not my warrior. Who's replaced by some stick who's also still really jacked. Not my Not warrior. as jacked as the older warrior. Why are you Hashtag presenting... Hashtag not my warrior. I know what you're talking about now, but why are you presenting that like it's a, like a conspiracy theory? Like that that's what happened. It's true. Yeah, yeah. that's what happened, yeah. Yeah, I don't. You're 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 throwing me for a loop, Steven. You're throwing me I don't for wanna, a loop. I don't want to sound like Brian Kendrick, dude. Okay. What are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about, Steven. I know we need to talk about Lucha what Underground, about? though. We are on season one, episode nine. The episode titled Aztec Warfare. Um, no way. It took place on January seventh of twenty fifteen, and they they start off the episode with a with a recap, Steven, don't they? It's a really short recap. <laughs> it's like, it is. Okay, I think the recap was like, we're gonna have a world title match next week, and that was the entire recap. <laughs> Let's go. And next week has already come because this oh my this week is is next week. So the recap right. is confusing. If you if you're tuning in midway through the recap, you are you're gonna have no idea what's going on. It's very sad. But mm -hmm. Steven, uh, this episode uh, Aztec Warfare is just one big match. It's a 45 50 minute match um it's the aztec Yo. warfare match i know i know it's crazy and what all of... is an aztec warfare match i've never heard of this before oh ever. my gosh the reason you wouldn't have heard of it steven is because it's a unique match concept created by the owner of the temple and lucha underground the mastermind that is dario cueto what's dario cueto yeah how do you make up such a good match like it's so unique i don't know he, he, do it is it? very unique it is very unique but the way we set up the match steven is last week on uh -huh. lucha underground we had two big 10-way matches with all the luchadors in lucha underground um where the winner of each of those two matches would go on to, uh, for the chance to win a unique opportunity from dario cueto um mm -hmm. the unique opportunity ended up being the number one spot and the number 20 spot in the match this week in Aztec Warfare, as it is a 20-man battle royal. Um, but instead of over the top rope, the only way to be eliminated is by pinfall or submission. Steven, how would you fare in an Aztec Warfare match? 
Honestly, I feel like the strat here is to um, don't go in the match. Just go outside the ring, kind of just chill a bit, you know? Kind of like a, a yeah. GCW, was it Clusterfuck match we saw? Yeah, exactly. Where, like, most of the rest was just chilling. Except just Blake outside. Christian just sitting down with the fans, drinking. It's awesome. Yeah. It's badass. I think, badass. um... Didn't like one didn't um what's it name? Joey Janela go to like a bathroom midway? Oh yeah, he match. went to the restroom, he went to concessions, yeah. yeah, he was having a good old time. He was having a good old time. Good um good room, good room. but this is not what happened in Aztec Warfare. I hate to spoil no, no, it. No, no. Um, they all the, wrestled. the luchadors were motivated. They were motivated because the winner of the Aztec Warfare match, Dario announced, would go oh. on to become and be crowned the first ever Lucha Underground champion. So everyone's what a motivated. Title. I know, I know. It's have, did you see how shitty that title looks? Oh my god. It looks god. so it's not even shiny. I don't know how they like Oh it's bad. it's like copper, right? It doesn't even look it doesn't look shiny. It just looks like bland copper. It looks horrible. On like a you know, rusty like leather strap. It looks atrocious, but it doesn't matter, Steven, because if you remember oh. the end of last episode, Dario was talking to the to the monster in the cage and, uh -huh. and he said that it's it's as gold that would was passed down by the Aztecs. So, so that's why it looks like shit. Yeah, it's yeah. really old. <laughs> it's just old. <laughs> it's true, it's true. That's very unfortunate. But uh -huh. Steven, uh, the the episode opens because we're in the new year. It's 2015. It's no longer 2014. No Lucha Underground took like a two or three week break. They are finally back uh -huh. with the Aztec Underground or the Aztec. Yo, they got warfare. fans now. They actually got fans this time because like now people are chanting Aztec Warfare. It was insane. Let's go. They never chant. They only cheer for like Chavo. Hell yeah, I only cheer for Chavo, honestly. I mean, to be fair, who else matters? You know? What? How dare you? How dare? You? Have you seen Superfly? Oh, okay. dude, Superfly. Dude. Yeah. That guy is known for his um, super flying abilities. He really is. He really is. In that one group in Mexico that we don't talk about. But yeah. uh, happy new year, Steven. It's 2015. It's a wonderful time. Happy new year uh, to you, too. They have all these Aztec dancers here. and drummers in the temple. There, it's a it's a big ceremony to start off the match, which is pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it starts out with Dario announcing the rules, which is basically that it's battle royal. New person comes out every ninety seconds, um, and the only way to eliminate your opponents is by pinfall or submission, um, or death. And exactly, Stephen, because it's the temple, and Dario loves violence. It is he anything it. goes. He really does. Too bad no one like really abuses the anything goes rule. They kind of just like nestle normally. I mean a little bit. It's still it's still good though. It's still I think it's used effectively. I think it's used effectively. Steven, Aztec what warfare up? begins. Uh -huh. Does it not? Yes, it does begin. Oh my god, I'm so excited. That's crazy. It really is. It really is. Steven, entrant number one is Ray Phoenix. We know this already though, because he was the man who lost his unique opportunity last week. Um and got Poor stuck dude. with the number one position. Poor dude, he got jogged last week, man. Poor I know. Guy. Honestly, honestly. Yeah. Um, and then by random draw, who is number two? Uh, Johnny Mundo. Yo. Which is crazy that it wasn't like Mr. Cisco or like Bale, like one of the shit guys. I know, I know. There are you know? twenty men in this match, and you now two of the biggest ones started yeah. off. It's it's insane. Um, it's almost like it was predetermined, Steven. Matt no Stryker is skeptical. He thinks there are yeah. shenanigans going on when Johnny Mundo comes out second. And I I agree with Matt Stryker, okay? Yeah, you think they rigged it? I think he, they might have been rigged by Dario. Well, how did he do it? It was like hat drawing? Was it like bingo, like round ball thingy that they spin and pick? Oh, that's a great how'd they, question. How'd they do it? I don't know. I, 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 I simply don't know. We have to get to the bottom of it. I, I hope it's like a hat draw. That'd be really funny. Just seeing like this sick. dead mill, just this big, gigantic, mm -hmm. big Rick dude going to a little like magician's hat and picking up a little paper i think so i think so sick. and the dude all at once they're all in like a line like in yeah little, everyone in it's, it's very fun yeah it's a great time they're crisscross applesauce they walk up and grab it hell i don't know how that's possible walking crisscross applesauce but that sounds very cool watching all I 20 think, men do I that think prince puma could do that it, i'm pretty sure he could right walk, walk on his knees crisscross yeah maybe that's gotta be a thing he's could do i don't know we'll have to ask him when we eventually interview um Trevor, our boy. Trevor. Uh, well, by the way, when we interview Trevor, we're only calling him Trevor, right? Oh, you guys sound like I'm fucking <laughs> mad, dude. <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll put like a lot of emphasis on it every time I say it. Dude, he's know? gonna think you're hey, a fucking Trevor. loser. What do you mean? No, I'll say it with. He's gonna think you're a fucking loser. He won't. Trevor, he's gonna think dude. I'm really cool. Because I'll, yeah. I'll refer to everyone else by their gimmick name, except for yeah. him, you know? Yeah. I Yo, think so. What up, Johnny Mundo? Yo, and Trevor, what is up? What is up? Um, Steven, uh, it, yeah. it starts out with Ray Phoenix and it's Johnny Mundo. Matt Stryker is skeptical, but that doesn't change the facts. These are the first two men in the match. Um, mm -hmm. Matt Stryker says Johnny Mundo is a man who would rather die on his feet than live on his knees. 
speaking of that's weird um and vampiro he says really screws up knees he i think really that may does. be why he really does but vampiro yeah. says i can't believe you just said something like that matt <laughs> he's just really offended by that you know he's a known feminist you know like bruised knees why do you care i guess why do you care dude but then matt striker says huh it's it's it, it's just a phrase vamp it's just a phrase bro it's just a phrase and vampiro it's says, like um yeah it's like when I said once on an online Discord server, uh -huh. sorry guys, I woke up on the wrong side of bed. And I got like really offended that I would say something like that as an excuse for my shit behavior. I mean, it is a pretty shitty excuse. Don't get- No, it's just a phrase, bro. It's well, just no, a phrase. It's, it's, it's definitely- it's just a phrase, bro. A phrase, but like if you're just a pulp- Just a phrase. You know what? You, you bring up a good point. Just a phrase, Vampiro bro. didn't interpret it that way. You're um, just like Matt Striker, and I'm like Vampiro, dude. Yo, right? honestly, honestly, I think you have those flipped, but it's okay. Um, because <laughs> Vampiro says, keep it up, Matt, and the two of us, we're going to be entrance number three and four, which is, yeah, okay, I mean, I'm fine with that, like, that, I'd be so cool with that, honestly, you know, why didn't they do that? I don't know. Honestly, do they have enough people on the roster for that? I don't know. I always forget there's, like, 20 people on the roster. I keep thinking there's, like, 10. Mm-hmm, mm hmm Because, like, half of them don't really matter. <laughs> what do you mean? Don't, what? don't disrespect El Mariachi Loco like that, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, that guy legit actually performed really well, though. Let's go. In the match. Let's go. Um, uh, yeah. By the way, uh, Matt Stryker is just calling the match when it's Phoenix and Johnny Mundo going back and forth. And he's talking mm -hmm. about Johnny Mundo's style and how it incorporates parkour. Um, parkour. To which Vampiro says, Hey, Matt, why do you always say por favor like that? <laughs> Matt Stryker says, I said parkour. Dang, dude. Vampiro's up with a vengeance. He wants to, like, bury... Poor Matt Stryker for being a shit commentator. He really does. And then Vampiro... <laughs> Matt's like, what the fuck? Vamp is just dumbstruck, though. He just... He responds and says, oh. And then it's silence. It's just... It's a very sad because state of affairs. I don't get it. It's one of those, like, things you can just edit out, you know? Because, like, do you really need that part in? I don't... I don't know. Does Vampiro be like, hey, Matt, why do you say Purple War? Well, you know what you can't edit out, Steven? What? That is entrant number three, who is our boy... The man in charge. It's Mr. Cisco. Oh, yeah, I love him. Let's go. Too bad go. he got jobbed completely in like two seconds. What are you talking about? But um, he did pretty well. My what? boy Cisco. Oh yeah, he I think, did. I think there was a line I heard from Vampiro, um, where he said, where I think someone did a shooting star press, mm -hmm. and then someone missed, right? What? And Vampiro was like, "What do you call a shooting star press when you miss?" And Matt Stryker's like, "I don't know, Vamp. It happened a few seconds ago." And then Vampiro replies, "Pin him or something." Oh, so I'm that's confusing. That's confusing. It's great. It's just great commentary. So yeah, like, very effective. again more commentary even when Mr. Yeah. Cisco comes out down the stairs. Matt Stryker says this little cholo, cholo is riding solo. <laughs> they love saying cholo so much. I don't know why. Oh, uh, because it rhymes with solo. You have to understand. The it's solo cholo. Clever. It's clever. Um, and then he says in his crew, because again, Bale, Cortez Castro and Mr. Cisco are now officially the crew. He says, in his crew, crew, Mr. Cisco is affectionately known as the Rusty Screwdriver. I don't even want to know what that means. Vampiro says, okay. Okay. More silence. <laughs> <laughs> just really cool. Vampiro's just so mad. He wants to, like, he probably doesn't want to be there. He probably wants to hang out with his family for the New Year. I guess so. He's just forced to be a Matt Striker. You know what? You bring up a great point. They did. They filmed this on Christmas Day, from my understanding. Yeah. So it was tough on everyone. It was. Um, it was very short lived, Mr. Cisco's time in this match, as um, Johnny Mundo proceeded to hit the Starship Pain and eliminate him in less than, like, a minute. So. Poor Cisco, dude. Poor yeah. Guy, just it was a bit unfortunate but next up okay. steven entrant number four was king cuerno um and then number five soon thereafter was son of havoc who yo they now sick. are calling the asphalt ass kicker which is a name it's um, cool it's volcanic very volcanic of him volcanic yeah he's uh he's like uh, he's like ash you know from a volcano i didn't that's interpret like. it that way but that's profound Wow, he's, it's almost like a phoenix rising from the ashes, some could say. Maybe. It's almost like I mean, he was born I, I in the know. rubble of a volcano. <laughs> no, he bites out of volcano ones. Oh, That's his whole thing. Okay, yeah. okay, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, yeah, polluting the world with his bike. Yeah. Everyone, what by the way, monster. hates uh, Son of Havoc when he comes out. But then, like, the minute he starts wrestling, everyone just starts cheering for him. 
which is like <laughs> they should have seen happening. It, it, it's, yeah. it's Matt Cross. Like people are gonna cheer, you know? Wow, he can do flips. That's insane. Yo, it is though, and especially in 2015. Um, yeah. Number six though, Steven, is Pimpinella Escalarta. He Yo, is my back. Boy Pim. Let's go, dude. go, Pimpy. Um, first thing he does is kiss Ray Phoenix on the lips. Um, yeah. Which is cool, which is cool. Respectful. And then he threatens to kiss the referee, Marty Elias. Um, mm -hmm. Marty Elias resists, which infuriates Matt Stryker, who screams, Come on! That, that, that's the most action you've gotten in a while! Um, Dang, Matt's into Pimp, dude. That's good for Matt. I know. I'm, I'm kind of into mm -hmm. Pimpy, too. Got me feeling different, Steven. Honestly, honestly. Um, but most importantly, number seven is our boy. Um, not as big of a boy as, as Mr. Cisco, but right below uh -huh. that. Um, it's Trevor. Um, Yo, let's go. Let's the prince is here. Go. He and his one and four record in Lucha Underground. Let's go. <laughs> Making his appearance. The protege of our boy, my other other guy. Oh, your other boy. Your third my boy. boy. <laughs> um, my third boy uh -huh. in Lucha Underground. Yeah. Who is? The one who never wrestles. You're talking about Conan. You know, Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What are you talking about? I'm sure that's he'd appreciate guy. that. No, that's I'm sure. My guy. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he, he is. He gives us such great advice to our guy, Prince Puma. He's he like, does. yo, yo, Prince Puma, stop losing or I won't be your friend anymore. And this is the last time we saw Prince Puma. That was what we heard. It was Conan screaming at him. If you miss yeah. another opportunity, Puma, that's it. I'm out of here. We're, we're not going to have a relationship anymore. And so yeah. you have to imagine that's weighing heavy on Puma as he enters the match, Steven. No, you really do. Um, as he gets into the ring, he goes straight after Johnny, um, which I, I kind of like the, the Prince Puma Johnny stuff, right? Where it's like, they're the two main good guys, but they also Both. like, they they like each other, but they also are, will fight each other very willingly. They're rivals. You know? You're like Pokemon rivals. It's like, yo, uh, yeah. yo, Johnny, I've never beaten you ever in a match. But in fact, I I've lost you. you clean in a match. But I like you, Johnny. <laughs> but I like you. But I like you. And the same is true in reverse. Um, by the way, Steven, guess who is watching uh -huh. this match from the crowd? Yo, who? Is it that woman? Yo, she is so hot. That woman? She is so hot. Um, the, the, the woman that Vampiro is in love with is in the crowd. And Matt Stryker points her out. And, and Vampiro doesn't say anything. Vampiro is just quiet. What the fuck's up with Vamp this episode? He's starstruck, dude. He's like, yo, the beauty is just too much for my eyes yeah no i kind of get that i kind of get that but steven guess what got yeah, what number eight comes out and matt striker yells the bitch is back um, the bitch is back it's ivalice um which is that's an asshole why is she the bitch that's that's like so mean i think doesn't she call herself a bitch i think yeah but like i think it's different to call some random chick a bitch you know like, i guess well yo, yeah if like bitch. like imagine this if it was like a shot of a random woman on the crowd and that uh. matt striker stream the bitch is back <laughs> that, <laughs> that bitch in the crowd <laughs> then i'd be concerned um but given the circumstance i think it's a little more acceptable uh, evilise gets into the ring though pimpinella grabs her by the hair and then no. matt striker says this is kind of hot you know I'll accept it. It's pretty hot. Yeah, you will. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, fair I, enough. I, um, Ivalice does some uh, spots paying homage to Vampiro, which the commentary gets excited about. Um, yeah. The only I know. thing Vampiro got excited for the entire match. <laughs> honestly, honestly. <laughs> she knows her crowd, Ivalice. She knows her crowd. <laughs> um, and then Pimpinella is eliminated by Son of Havoc uh, no. after he hits a shooting star press on him. Which is devastating. That's their first pinfall loss, too. That's crazy. I know. I know, even Poor though it Pimpy. happened to Mr. Cisco moments ago. But, mm. oh, okay. Uh, number nine is Drago, Steven. Uh, and it's the most fucked up thing. Okay. Uh -huh. He runs into the ring, Drago. And immediately, he grabs Prince Puma and does the moonlight drive right in front of John Morrison. Like, just does his <laughs> own move right in front of him. It's fucked up. <laughs> He doesn't even, like, lose to it. Like, it's just the move. Like, a transition. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just, it's the start with his chain. Barry. Exactly. Barry. <laughs> Poor Mundo. Exactly. And then they, but basically the, the point of having Drago in there at that time is that he can continue oh. his little feud with King Cuerno because the two of them still have some tension going on. They're 50-50 yeah. right now with their record. So it's interesting. Um, and then King Cuerno, by the way, hits Ivalice with the thrill of the hunt. She is awesome. out of the match. Awesome. Eliminated. Uh, number Pretty 10, sick. Steven. I love that. It's the halfway point. Guess who comes out? <gasps> Who's out? Who's out? Is it? Is it our guy? Our <sighs> no. Bale, is it? He's not my guy, but he is Bale. Um, Yo, which is unfortunate. Which my... Bale is like that, um... <laughs> yeah. I don't know how. 
like out of the three like grunt like generic like mm -hmm. grunt characters you managed to be the worst one like it's tough how it's it's very tough. poor bail dude poor I have bail to be honest i have I to be honest i don't understand yeah, I don't either, Steven. I don't either. But my favorite thing I is... I think this is also the first time I heard his name. Like, I don't remember his name at all until like, I watched the episode <laughs> so when sad. he came out. That's so sad. Uh, when he does come out, you, you would have heard his name because Matt Stryker says, A guy like Bale, he's going to slow down this match. <laughs> Which, <laughs> yeah, fuck Lucha Wrestling. I guess so, yeah. We need more head rest. That's cool. <laughs> We're... That's awesome. Um... And uh, by the way, uh, Prince Puma eliminates uh -huh. Son of Havoc about this point, which is, is no. very sad. It's very unfortunate. They didn't time it right. They really no. didn't. They really didn't. Um, and then, Steven, number uh -huh. 11 comes out uh, in the, the finish of the trifecta, even though Mr. Cisco is gone at this point, which is devastating news. It is the boys. Cortez motherfucking Castro, okay? He's all right. I like him. You know, he's he's pretty chill. I like him. He's pretty chill. He's pretty chill. Yeah. He's pretty, he's pretty chill, Grunt. I like him. I, I guess so. a Grunt. That'd be like my second hand me on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Matt Stryker says he's the linchpin of the crew, which I thought was interesting. What does that mean? That's good lore. I, I guess kind of like he's the leader, right? Like he's the one in charge. Really? Over Cortez? That is Cortez. Cortez is the oh, man wait. we're talking oh, about. Oh, I mean over Cisco. Over Cisco. Oh my God. Definitely over Cisco. What do you think is going on there? Poor Cisco, man. Cisco doesn't know what the fuck to do. Cisco think, needs someone to tell him what to do. You know. I think Cisco is gonna get up there eventually, man. Okay? Maybe. Like he's gonna bloom like a butterfly, and then Cortez is gonna be like, "Yo, I support you, man. I'm gonna be bully you now." I don't. And then think... they switch positions. Oh, wow. So they're not even gonna kick out Cortez. Cortez is just gonna. He's gonna Demote yield himself. to Mr. Cisco. <laughs> That's very yeah. cool. It's very nice of him. Um, mm -hmm. Matt Striker also says he's the best technical wrestler in the group, in addition to being the linchpin. Um, and Vampiro wow. says, Matt, no. No, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. He says, he's just aggressive. He, he's, he has the, the biggest chip on his shoulder out of all of them. He's just a dick. Yeah, honestly. And then Just Van an asshole, Matt. Come honestly, on. and he's not wrong. You know, you look at Mr. Or Cortez Castro, and you look at, oh. you look at a guy like Mr. Cisco, Cortez is a massive dick, you know? Just compare, yeah. comparatively. With um, the grunts. Exactly. And Vampiro the says, this is just like jail. You got to stick with your own. Um, yeah. So I don't I don't know if... It, are there implications of of race warfare? I don't really know what he was talking about. I don't get about. if they're just being racist to, like, the gang, like, trope they have, right? I, uh -huh. I, I just can't tell. Well, it's not like... I don't think it's necessarily commentary being racist as much as it's a gimmick that plays on racial stereotypes you know right right yeah so i, I don't it's it's it'd be tough for matt and vamp to not play into it but also mm -hmm. you don't need to say stuff like that and call him a cholo every five seconds we can avoid that's these the things. thing i feel so bad because like literally every time they pop up hey it's that cholo yo the cholo's going solo that's clever <laughs> you need to yell that out matt every time i think so I th even if he's uh -huh. with the crew, say the Cholos going solo. The Cholos, the Cholos three trios, guys. Let's, Let's go. Go. Oh my gosh. Um, Steven, number twelve uh -huh. is Ricky Mandel. We've seen this man once before in Lucha Underground action. Uh, he might have been really in one tall. of the ten mans last week, actually. But prior to that, point, I think he was. He just got squashed by Mil Muertes. Um, poor guy. Yeah, poor guy is right. Um, and Matt Striker says he's a great American pro wrestler. Which is just so yeah. true, so true. He's very known in the American pro circuits. Hell Ricky yeah. Mendel. Hell yeah. Um, but, Steven, uh, about this uh -huh. time, Prince Puma starts messing up Bale real bad, okay? He hits a shooting star no, press. Bale! Eliminated. Bale is out of no, here. Oh, my um, boy. I don't, again, I simply can't wrap my head around how that man debuted. Like, wh <laughs> why? Why is, okay. <laughs> What um, a great debut. That's like when the Butcher debuted in the Blade in AEW. Oh, hell yeah. That was sick. Where, that like, was it was awesome. like the crowd, like, who the fuck is this nerd? What? And just like, that's 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 the Butcher in, in the Blade. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Honestly, honestly. Um, and then, Steven, right after that, it's a really sad state of affairs. Johnny Mundo huh? knees Cortez Castro in the face. It's just a sliding knee. Off. Um, and he pins it. shining wizard. One, two, three. Cortez Castro is out of here. Dude, I just lost to like a knee kick. It was, it was horrible. Horrible. Yeah, Why are they doing this to the crew? You know, the crew like, is destined like for greatness. 
when you have more people, you just become weaker overall as an mm, individual. You become diluted. No, you bring up yeah. a good point. You bring up a good point. Um, this is obviously what's happened to Cortez Castro. I mean, they need to go solo, honestly, all three of them. I think they could have killer solo careers independently in Lucha Underground. Who's going to become the big, who's become the Shawn Michaels of the group? Who's going to become the Roman of the group? You know? <laughs> the Roman, yeah. Uh huh. I don't think we got a Marty Jannetty. I think all three of them are going to be stars. Mr. Cisco, yeah. Cortez Castro, and All Bale. three of them are the Roman? Yeah. I th well, no, because yeah. John and, and Seth are both stars, right? Right? I don't know Let's think of Bail is definitely the Roman. Roman's definitely the Bail, okay? Right. Because, right, you know, right. he's the guy that was brought in last. Um, bigger uh -huh. guy, he's bigger the physique. the chosen one. He's the chosen one. He's Dario's golden uh -huh. boy. Um, he's the oost of the stable. Exactly. And then mm, mm, Mr. Cisco was probably John Moxley. You know, a little more rough and tumble. Um, where's the wife beater? Where's the wife beater? You know, more ruthless in his approach. He's, he's sloppy, yeah. but intentionally so. You he's know? more into much show wrestling shows, too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but still at the top of his game, Mr. Cisco. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas Cortez Castro, uh, despite what Vampiro would say, um, is more the technical guy. You know, he's going to do pretty he's stuff the in the ring. He's the leader. He's the Seth. You know, yeah. he's absolutely the, the Seth. Sure. I'm really glad sure. we got to have that discussion. He is the architecture. Yeah. You're so right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Steven, but right as uh, the crew is all eliminated, here comes Big Rick. Let's go. Yo. Let's that go. gigantic, dude. Everyone in the in the match is so tiny compared to this big man. So true. So true. Big Rick is, is fucking huge. Um, and he gets right in. He gets a Uranagi on Ricky Mandel. Ricky Mandel is eliminated. It's so sad. I mean, it's finisher, man. No, it's really not. Um, then he, <laughs> this was awesome. He lifts up Drago, tosses him on top of King Crano's shoulders, like into a fireman's carry, and then mm -hmm. King Crano hits a thrill of, a thrill of the hunt. Dude, one, King two, Crano three. was insane this match. Yo, King Crano is awesome. He He's really amazing. is. Amazing. Um, it also, uh, right about this time, Johnny Mundo ends up mm -hmm. performing a crucifix roll up on, um, I assume King Cuerno. In my notes, I typed in Johnny Mundo's uh, name twice. So it says Mundo rolled up Mundo, eliminated. Mm. Um, I don't sense, think that happened. Sense. I don't think so. I think Maybe Cuerno it's like a out. psychological thing where Johnny Mundo eliminated himself in his head. Oh so therefore, he can't compete in the match as strong as he should be. You are so do. right. He was just questioning himself, you know, yeah. which I appreciate. I appreciate some insecurity in, in my role models. Um, mm -hmm. Number 14, Steven, is Pentagon Jr. Let's go. Yo, that guy was sick in this match. He did a cool power-up bomb. I think it was like he he um pushed, what was it, Ray up, right? Ray did like a, a flip, and then he grabbed him and power-bombed. Don't look Yo, insane. Yo, badass, Looks badass. Also, as soon as he gets into the ring, he starts doling out sling blades, which, of course, Matt yeah. Striker's in love with. He starts screaming, Tanahashi, just over and over again. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Tanahashi special. Honestly, honestly. Um, and let's see what else happened when when Pentagon got in. I, I um, not much. Pentagon went for a pin on Phoenix, and Big Rick just broke it yeah. up at one point. Which yeah. I like that they called exactly. out. Like Vampiro just straight up called out. Like why why is he doing that? What what's he doing? He wants well, to let him pin him. Um, um, Big Rick wants to um get all the glory for himself and pin everyone in the match. Oh, he wants the pin. I see, I see, I see. That makes sense. I'm like that coward, Cuerno, who's Ooh. looking at people getting pinned. What, what a, a loser. loser. What a loser. Um, but Steven, this match has all been leading to one point, has been leading to the climax, which comes right about here when number 15 comes out. It is Superfly. Oh my god, Superfly. Oh. And the crowd goes. Um, well, yeah, they don't uh, give a shit about Superfly, sadly. He goes, he, I mean, he does some exciting shit. Like, he, he does some flips and. What? He, he flies, as the name would indicate. Um, and the crowd is so silent. It didn't even edit in sound and post. They were like, no, we can't even <laughs> fix this. Which is sad. They didn't it's... even have to pipe. They didn't have the budget to pipe in for him. They're not like, for you know Superfly, what? no. Not our losses, man. It's a lost Sorry, cause. Superfly. Uh, especially because Matt Stryker keeps calling him Fly. His nickname is just Fly. Which is... Dude, what up, Fly? It's bad. It's like when they call it Shin. Hey, Shin. What up, Shin? It's much better than when he debuted. See, I went back and I watched TakeOver Dallas from WrestleMania 32 uh -huh. like a, a week or so ago. I Nucky. forgot. No. Corey Graves no. calls him Swagske. <laughs> yeah, that's Swagske over there, dude, with his swagger. The exaggerated swagger of a Japanese man. Like, Very I awesome. love Corey Graves, but shit, that sucks, okay? Like, 
damn. Um, either way, Wagner. Vampiro says muscle is sometimes better than being a speedy little fly boy, and and that quote is word for I word, um, which is cool. Uh, number 16 comes out though, Steven, and it is an absolute legend in the sport, a legend of Lucha Underground. The man an entire country is chasing after. It's Chavo Guerrero. Let's go, dude. Let's go. He actually got a chance too. It's insane. The crowd knows what's up. Like anyone in this match, no reaction. Chavo comes out immediately. Chavo chance, dude. It's Hell so yeah. good. Hell hey, respect yeah. to our boy, our man, the man of the people. Chavo Guerrero. And he does the people a massive favor when he gets in Steven. He brings a steel chair with him and he brains Superfly. Eliminates him. <laughs> he eliminates him. Who just lost to a chair shot? Exactly. Who loses to a chair shot? Exactly. Who? Who? I guess Super... I guess Fly I guess loses fly. to a chair shot. I ain't so super anymore. <laughs> no. Um. By the way, uh, Pentagon really loves the fact that Superfly was just eliminated. And so he comes... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let's go, bro. Yo, fuck let's yeah, Chavo. Go. Let's go, dude. He comes over to Chavo. He starts celebrating. He goes for like a high five. Um, yeah. And I take this to be a very nice moment. I'm like, oh my God, we finally have confirmation that these two men are friends. Steven, if You're we friend. put on our lore caps, um, yeah. we've been very confused about whether or not Pentagon Jr. likes Chavo Guerrero. Because we thought he just kind of got forced into being his friend. But now we know mm -hmm. Pentagon is They're starting buddies. to warm up to him. They're buddies. Um, yeah. And then it's nice. Then Chavo it's turns his back on him. No, why would you do that? Chavo uses the chair what was the... on Pentagon, pins him. What was the lore reasoning for that? <laughs> One, two, three. I guess the lore reasoning is Chavo's an asshole. Like, why would you do that, Chavo? Like, there's like other people gonna limit in the match first, you know? Yeah, you have so few friends. This dude just wants a high five, man. It's like your only friend in the entire match, and you kill him. This Chavo. Is so sad. Um, Chavo, you idiot. He's an idiot. He's an idiot. Um, but 17, wow. number 17 comes out, Steven. And the oh. camera cuts to the top of the, the stairs. And Vampiro says exactly what I was thinking. I don't see anybody. There's no one there. Who is it? It's like um, it's like when at WrestleMania, right? We were watching the, the Divas tag team match. Mm -hmm. And um, Zelina was on <laughs> our side of the ring. Uh -huh. But the way she was standing behind like the, the ring post... Just invisible. Just completely like, obstructed. Was, yeah. We just couldn't see her, which is insane because she was standing on the same side as us. She's just a tiny like, woman. She's a tiny little woman, <laughs> Zelina Vega. You have to understand. It's crazy. We have to be okay with these things. We have to. We have to. Um, uh -huh. But who it ends up being, Steven, coming out at number 17, it's Masquerita Sagrada. Um, Yo, our guy. He's obscured by all the fans standing up, so we don't see him until he's in clear shot of the aisle. Um, <laughs> Poor dude. But when we do, it's an exciting time. I um, like how Matt just committed to calling him Marshmallow. He, yeah. Like, that's he, all he is. Just, just a Marshmallow. It was just kind of an asshole thing to do. You know? Well, okay. Okay. So, you're right. Because it ends up being Masquerita Sagrada versus Big Rick, Steven. Like, that's the thing. Uh, like, Big, Big Rick, of course, like the monster giant already in the ring. Masquerita the little person. Um, mm -hmm. And Matt Striker says, it's bad news that he's wearing white right now. Um, that outfit's about to change color. Uh, What's he gonna do? Eat him? Exactly. That's what Vampiro says. He says, "Is he gonna eat him? Is is is, is Big Rick gonna eat him?" Aww. And what does Matt Striker say, Stephen? I forget. What does he say? He says, "Is he like a marshmallow, right?" Mm, like that? Marshmallow. I don't get it. Why is this bitch just this little guy? He must be a marshmallow. Well, he's it's so mean. White, you see. Um. It's not nice. It's not nice. But uh, to cover it all up, uh, number 18 is Sexy Star. She yo, makes her way to the ring. Yo. and No reaction to whatsoever. Well, yeah, very minimal reaction. Um, but that's only because they didn't hear commentary. Um, there would have been right. a reaction if they had hurt Mad Striker saying, Here comes the girl who tears down the no girls allowed sign on your treehouse. It's badass, dude. Yeah, empowering. she's she's really cool. I mean, it's not as impressive when you're like a girl wrestler, right? Right now, because you know, Evilise was in the match like ten minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, she's kind of just there. Yeah, honestly, like Evilise is doing much more for the cause of feminism than Sexy Star. I have to be honest. Honestly, yeah, yeah, it's crazy how um, Lucha Underground chose maybe two of the worst women possible to represent their yeah. company. <laughs> you know, it's really sad. <laughs> what um, do Ivelisse do? Ivelisse? She's just a yeah. horrible person apparently backstage. Like she got fired from AEW after like a month, you know? Oh my gosh. Yeah, like, and just, just sick. Yeah, 
Uh, she doesn't get along with Jack Evans. I know that. Um, Aw, what? Yeah, Jack Evans sounds, so like sad. Cool. Looks like a, she sounds like a chill dude, Jack Evans. I know, right? I know. Um, the heck is. But she goes straight to the attack on Chavo Guerrero, Steven. Um, about oh. this time, too, Big Rick hits a sliding clothesline on the little marshmallow that is Masquerita Sagrada, gets the elimination. One, two, three, Masquerita's out. But this is all in anticipation of number 19, who is El <gasps> Mariachi Loco. Yo, our boy. That guy was doing flips this match. It was insane. Yo. Oh, hell I don't think yeah. I ever seen him do flips ever, but he just did. And it was like, oh my gosh, hell he had to yeah. wrestle. I was looking up on Cage Fight all like the when I was trying to calculate Prince Puma's official Lucha Underground record. I was trying to put together yeah. all the matches, and apparently El Mariachi Loco is their dark match guy. He fights in every <laughs> single dark match. It's crazy. <laughs> like before the show? Like, yeah, before the show, before they start the he, recording. Who does he wrestle? Is he like known? Like nowadays, or he's just gone. No, he's not known. I don't. I don't know what the hell he's doing. I thought we looked Where him up he? after his debut. I think we looked him That's up. He's crazy. just a guy. Yeah. Poor dude. That's awesome. That guy. Just, that guy has a good job. He does it. Does it greatly. It really good does. Really does. Does he just lose all these dark matches? Like the bigger talent. I didn't pay attention. But it's, oh. this doesn't matter. This is all frivolous when we think about what's about to happen, Steven. We already know the man who's left in the match. Only one competitor remaining in Aztec Warfare. The man who <gasps> earned himself a unique opportunity last week by beating Ray Phoenix and 10 other men. No. It's Mil Muertes. The guy um, looked awesome. He did a spear on everyone. It yo, was crazy. I thought it was crazy. cool because he entered and Ray Phoenix was still in the match. You know? Number one wow. and number 20. Crazy, That's crazy, good crazy. Booking. You're so right. You're so right. Uh, he hits the flatliner on El Mariachi Loco and eliminates him, which is the opposite of good yeah. booking. Exactly. Honestly, Mirage should have countered, done a stunner, shooting star pressed, easy elimination one. on the mill. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just get to one count. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty, that's honestly how it would go. Like, that's a believable spot. <laughs> um, but what's very exciting is the man who steps toe to toe with Mil Muertes is Big mm -hmm. Rick. The two big men of Lucha Underground for the first hey, time yo. are in a ring together. The big boys. Let's go. Um, Which big man would win they're going back and forth clash. they're trading yeah. shoulder tackles steven going back and forth back and forth they start trading forearms <gasps> and then it's just broken yeah. up by phoenix puma and mundo like and the crowd what? just what are these vanilla midgets doing dude i know they've ruined like what was supposed to be like the the, the biggest matchup of, of this entire series it's, it's ruined because of these guys it's so sad it's like when the fed goes to in saudi arabia to their shows and they always have like the big guys come out the for, big like, guy spot. oh Mm -hmm. Like, remember that one Royal Rumble one, right? This big giant man comes out. We don't know who he was, by the way. <laughs> He's just some really big dude. And the crowd went crazy for him. It was insane. Let's go. I would We've too. never seen him ever since, by the way. He just kind of disappeared. That's tough. That's tough. But it happens. It happens. Uh, so, Steven, at about this point, uh, who is it that hits? A, I think Prince Puma. No, sorry. Johnny Mundo hits a starship paint on Big Rick in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, Puma then follows it up with a running shooting star press. Chavo, though, throws both of them, Puma and Mundo, out of the ring um, and then gets a two count on. No! On what's his face? On Big Rick, but that's only because, not because Mil Muerte, or sorry, Big Rick kicked out, it's because referee Rick Knox stopped counting. Because he looks <gasps> up and coming down from the top rope, it's Ray Phoenix hitting. Oh my a, gosh. A 630 senton on top. He's stealing other people's moves. <laughs> honestly, honestly. Um, on top of Chavo and Big Rick. Into the elimination, one, two, three, and Big Rick is out of here. Um, F. I know, they're putting a lot of weight behind uh, Ray Phoenix, though, by the way. They had him win the 10 man, oh, pinning insane. Rick. It's now. crazy because just like two episodes ago, he was kind of just a jobber. Yeah, and, and also, no. like a minute later in this match, unfortunately, Chavo gets his chair back, uh, brains Phoenix, and eliminates him. So. <laughs> it's fucking boom! You're it's 50 50. It's 50 50. Um. I mean, Chavo is your guy. Like, he's probably like your your biggest heel. I think is he the biggest heel right now? No, Big Rick no? is definitely the biggest heel. Is Big Rick? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I okay, think so. Okay. Um, Sexy Star though is looking for vengeance on Chavo still. Um, so she oh. confronts the now chair armed Chavo, um, and he just fuck he messes her up, Steven. Okay. No. He, he's and then choking her with the chair. He is. But then, he sets Out the chair the on darkness. her face. He sets the chair on her face and climbs to the top rope. He's going to do like a diving move on top of Sexy's break face. Break her neck. Oh my God. But then, out of nowhere, a blue angel pops out. 
and beats the shit out of Chavo Guerrero. Oh my god, the blue angel, it's blue demon. Oh my <laughs> it's god. A blue demon. And the crowd goes. Um, I think they forgot blue demon was ever in the temple. <laughs> um, How many people in that audience actually watched his match with Chavo? That's a good question. That's what I want to know. Because, like, you don't have, like, if you're there in person, you don't have the constant reminders from Matt Stryker and the sexy star vignettes being like, I'm doing yeah. this for Blue Demon while he recovers in Mexico, you know? So, it's it's a little sad. There's not much of a hey, reaction. But he knocks out Chavo back. off the top rope. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um... And this sets up Sexy for an opportunity, because of course, again, riding the coattails of, of a man, you know, just the, the, the sexy way. Um, and and she, he just leaves. Well, yeah, he, he, he leaves as He's Sexy like, hits Chavo might... with a chair. One, two, yeah. three. Chavo is eliminated. Let's go. No. Um, except let's Chavo. not go, because it's bad and horrible and no. fuck Sexy Star. Why would you help Sexy Star? You idiot idiot absolute idiot uh but this means we are down to our final four in the match steven it's johnny uh -huh. mundo it's sexy star it's prince puma and it's mil muertes one the of these four of the company exactly one of these it's four sexy people star. is going to become the first ever lucha underground champion um uh -huh. and uh, what's it called? Uh, Mundo is, of course, the least fresh man in this match. He entered at number two alongside Phoenix, and Matt Stryker tries defending this by saying, the people who get wet earliest have the most time to dry. Which... Yeah, makes that's, sense. But, but no, not in the context of wrestling. The metaphor really doesn't translate. You have yeah. stamina, right? <laughs> the, it, I, I, I sure, he has stamina, stamina, but the, the, the metaphor is useless. It, it's, it doesn't me make any sense here. Just meant they rest outside the ring longer. That's all that means. I guess so. I guess so. Um, Sexy Stargo yeah. gets speared by Mil Mortez, and he just eliminates her. So Sexy's out. Um, very yeah, sad. Yeah, fuck Sexy. The first of the four pillars is gone. Um, <laughs> and it gets no the four pillars of Lucha Underground. <laughs> Sexy Star. Let's. She's actually all four pillars. It's her in four different <laughs> outfits. It's awesome. <laughs> Hell. All yeah. four reincarnations of Sexy Star. Let's go. Let's go. Um, Puma, by the way, hits a zigzag on Johnny Mundo, and Matt Stryker just straight up calls it a zigzag, which I was a very big fan of. Um, what? Yeah. That's awesome. That's it's, yeah, it's badass. It's badass. Uh, Mundo, by the way, tries breaking Prince Puma's back at one point, because I, yeah. I don't even think I can describe the move properly, but Mil Muertes was holding Prince Puma's body up on the ropes, right? Like, Prince Puma was technically sitting on the second rope, with the back half, the top of his half of his body on the outside, and his legs and thighs on the inside, and Johnny Mundo leaps over Mel Muertes, a crossbody onto the rope sitting Prince Puma, and smashes his spine right into like the 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 the, the what's it called? The fucking the ring edge. What's it called? The what chiropractor is... fucking cracked it, dude. It's yeah, I, absolutely. No Why can't I think of the name of the hardest part of the ring? What is that? The apron. The apron. Thank you so much. I'm an idiot. Yeah, um, the really hard part of a ring called an apron. Absolutely. The thing that it's made out of cloth. What? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking <laughs> what about. What do you mean? Um, but after Johnny Mundo does this, Vampiro is pissed off. He starts calling Johnny oh. Mundo a two-faced backstabber for doing this to who he thought was was his friend. Um, which, it's like, why why can't Vampiro be okay with the fact that these these two guys, Puma and Mundo, are competitive but but still friends? You know. Why is that no too sense. much for him to grasp? It's no sense. Oh, okay. They're, just not, they're not as good friends. I guess so. Uh, Puma hits yeah. the Benadriller on Johnny Mundo, but this is when Katrina starts getting involved because she, of course, came out with Mil Mortez. Um, mm -hmm. But Prince Puma actually grabs Katrina by the hair as she's on the outside and lifts her up to the ring apron. Um, and... It, it's it's it, which is crazy. I I don't know why you're having your your main good guy or one of your main good guys grab this woman by the hair and just like yank well, her. Well, she's a bad woman. I mean, she's I not guess a good so. Woman. She's a bad woman. Yo, absolutely, absolutely. Bad woman. Um, she Matt Striker out of her is insane. Matt Striker asks the question: Do you know how many people would want to do this? Um, when Puma Take grabs you, her hair, it really is. It really is. But you're right. Johnny Mundo accidentally disaster kicks Katrina. Um, when Mil Mortes no. moves out of the way. It's so sad. Mil Mortes is furious, though. He is enraged. 
um, and he's about to like fucking unload on Johnny Mundo, but Prince Puma uh -huh. saves him because again they're still friends. Um, they're friends. He also realized that um, if Mill is the last one in, he's kind of fucked. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So they end up doing some two on one offense. So Johnny Mundo yeah. goes up to one corner, Mill or not Mill, uh, Puma to the other. They hit double 450 splashes on top of Mill Mortez. One, two, three. Mill Mortez is eliminated. His first pinfall ever. That's oh crazy. Oh my god. And it took two men. Technically, it took 19 other men. Um, if, Which if is we crazy because um he took less punishment from that finish than Big Rick did Yo. when he got out. Because mm -hmm. it took like three splashes for Big Rick to get out. You're right. You're right. Poor Mill. It's insane. You know, but he was also yeah. mentally distraught after seeing Katrina get hurt. So True. But Big Rick was True. probably mentally distraught after seeing the crew get hurt. So uh, it true. really does even out, I guess. <laughs> he, saw the, he saw the boys get out one by one and his heart, it just breaks. Oh no. That's so sad. This that is the is so day sad. Big Rick lost his smile. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> devastating. Um, but one of these two men now, Steven, is going to be the first uh -huh. ever Lucha Underground champion. The two men, the main event episode one of Lucha Underground, Johnny Mundo or Prince Puma. Yo, um, this is long-term booking. Yo, hell yeah, it was. Um, also, again, if, also, if, if Puma loses, what does this mean? What, what does this mean with, about his relationship with Conan? You know? Yeah. This is going to be the biggest missed opportunity yet. He's, he's one pinfall away from becoming Lucha. The opportunity that everybody champion. got in the company. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you make up a good point. Um, Matt Stryker, by the way, is getting very heavy into the play-by-play -play about this point. Like, just non-stop word vomit. Like, trying to call the match. And at one point, he, he, he says, Vamp, help me out. <laughs> it was like... Nah, bro, I'm enjoying the match, he dude. He does. He's a sorry oh, dude. Man. I'm watching the match. <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. <laughs> fucking so am hey, I. Hero, do your job. Nah, dude. Nah, man, I'm watching the I match. You gotta watch it, bro. Well, that's literally vital to your job is watching the match. I'd prefer you do. Yes, this is not... Whatever. Whatever. Um, Puma hits a uh, avalanche Spanish fly. Mundo kicks out of it. There's a poison Rana from the top rope from Johnny Mundo into an end of the world, a starship pain, which Prince Puma kicks out of, which is crazy. And then Puma follows it up with a 630 senton. One, two, three. What? Prince Puma. What? Is now two and four in Lucha Underground. How did he kick out the Starship Pain? Yo, how did he pin anyone? You, this dude sucks ass, and now he's champion. Let's go. He pin. <laughs> Let's go. Um, this is his first pinfall win, like legit. Like, just, yeah, because right? the other like, one was Johnny tag team with Johnny. You're right against the yeah. crew. You're absolutely right. Well, it, he saved his first pinfall for a good one, Steven. He's now the Lucha Underground oh. champion, despite how shitty the little belt looks. Um, and Conan is here to celebrate with him, not to fire him and dump him as a friend and mentor. You know? Which is exciting. They're like, yo, thanks for winning, dude. Now we can still say friends. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's, yo, I'm so happy. And he kisses the camera, kisses the crowd, Let's, and the episode oh. ends. Well, he also has a handshake and a hug with Johnny Mundo, which is nice. You know? That's true. That's long term. Well, I mean, you think Johnny really minds? Because he has like 100K in his bank account right now, you know? Well, Puma has like nothing, I assume. Yeah, I, I would imagine he, then the money he does have, it all goes directly to Conan anyways, you know? Yeah. So he I, he doesn't seem like a money-motivated guy, you know? He's just there for the fight. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Um, but yes, even we the homeless, have like our... Darby Allen. Exactly. We have our first ever Lucha Underground Champion. What are your thoughts on it being Prince Puma? On Trevor? I mean, it makes sense that it's Prince Puma, right? Because like, that's like the guy they, they were kind of pushing. Mm -hmm. Like, organically, I guess. Well, I hope person would have given a Chavo because I think it would have been funny. That would have been awesome. Chavo had it. Oh my yeah. god, I, Chavo would not have been a bad choice. Um, but I, I think maybe he could have been because I remember at the time when I watched Lucha Underground, I sort of uh -huh. thought Chavo was a bit of a scrub and a joke. Um, well, Chavo kind of carries his matches too. Yeah, well, like, I, like insane. I can see that and appreciate that now. But again, young me would have been like, "What the fuck? Why is Chavo their champ?" And probably not been interested. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? Chavo Guerrero? Exactly. Fuck. Exactly. Ew. This is the exact response I have. It's physical disgust. Um, Gross. I know, I know. But this is an amazing start to the new year. 2015. Prince Puma is champion. Uh, you said it's like an organic thing. Like, you're like, oh, it makes sense because he's organically like the guy they're pushing. Isn't yeah. that organic I mean, when they clearly had this planned? Like, it's not like the crowd reacted well to Puma and so they made him champ. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd goes mild. Yeah. Yeah, like, 
I, I feel like organic builds right now. Yeah. You have Chavo. You have like Ray Phoenix. Mil Muertes even. I, w I wouldn't call what Puma has an organic build, you know? Well, he's been like pushed the most. He's been ridden the most. That's fair. That's like, you got fucking got 50 vignettes. Promos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I'm just punching like punching bags and beating up homeless people and doing Let's flips and shit. Go Conan yelling at him. It's a good time. I'm pretty sure Conan has more screen time than Prince Puma in what? like vignettes too. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause the dude doesn't talk. He just, they simply, they do tight shots on his face of him like quivering his lip and crying. You know, that's all yeah. they do for him. It's very sad. It's very sad. Steven, very disappointing. that Let's was stop. the first ever Aztec Warfare. Uh, what are your thoughts on the match itself? I thought the match was fun. Yeah. I mean, I feel like um, for these matches, it's more like just turn off your brain kind of stuff. You know, it's like, yo, I'm going to have some fun. Watch people get the shit beat out of each other. Mm -hmm. It's like the Royal Rumble, you know, just like, I don't want to think. Just yeah. watch. Like, just consume the product. Yo, as much as we are lore keepers, there was very little lore to necessarily decipher and, and, yeah. and dissect from this. There week. was like... Blue Damon coming back, that's kind of Lori. Yeah, I mean, that's good. That's good. He's he's back. Yeah. Uh, he's finally rehabbed his injuries um, after he's being back stretchered. back to Mexico. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you can't, uh, you have to imagine that the rest of the country is is not far behind. Um, the army is, is making their <laughs> way the boys. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. That's so sick. Um, so yeah, Steven, uh, is there uh, anything else you want to talk about with this episode before we, we move on to our... That title looks really bad. Oh boy, does No it. offense to the company, it does not look that great. It's very, like, ugly brown, greenish it color. It really is. Dario it Cueto looks... needs to look into it, man. Like, I, I, cause if I gave 100k it. to Johnny Mordo, but you couldn't give 100k to the bell. Yeah, what? I can't believe he gave 100k to Johnny Mordo like that. I, I don't <laughs> yeah. know why he would do that. Um, when, yes, up, very clearly there's a better investment they could have made. They could have made. Um, Steven, we'll be back next week, of course, with uh, episode 10 of Lucha Underground, the first episode with Prince Puma as champion. But for oh. now, we need to dive into what happened um, outside of Lucha Underground in, <gasps> in the world what of happened? wrestling um, in, in January of 2015. So let's get to it, okay? Okay. <laughs> Hey man, what happened in this week of January 15? 7. 14? S 7? 7. 7? 2015. Oh my gosh, Steven. It's so funny you ask because I happen to have a bunch of notes prepared on what happened in wrestling during that specific week right in front of it's me. New Year, right? Of course, it's crazy. The They're... New Year has a lot of stuff happening, I guess. It really is. Um, I don't think so. I feel like, honestly, New Year's is kind of like a slower period in wrestling, you know? Is it? I think so, like, because mm -hmm. they don't have too much going on around the holidays. They have day one. That's new pay-per-view they have nowadays. You, you know what? You bring up a good point. You bring right, up a good point. Pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, but uh, the biggest news going on in this week, back uh, six, seven years ago, um, is that oh. our poor, poor guy, um, Jerry the King Lawler, has been hospitalized oh, no. with diverticulitis. Um, oh. Yeah. It's so sad. So sad. Um, it's which, scary. It's like I, during the time where Jerry Lawler was like anything that happened to him was like oh, oh shit. Yeah, so, this was post heart attack. So, um, Devastating. Kind of scary. Devastating. That's right now though. Hell yeah. Watch TikTok. Because at it's the time he was full time on Raw as commentator alongside Michael Cole and JBL. Oh. Um, but this week he was replaced by Booker T. It was only like a week or so that he was gone from television. I think. Do you but, like Booker T's commentary? Fucking no. I never liked like, Booker the T. The only time I remember Booker T's commentary was like not even like during his commentary thing he was doing it was just him just like feuding with cody rhodes and saying shucky ducky quack quack Let's go a lot mm -hmm. that's it that's all i remember booker t's like commentary like that's fun era that that's uh, that's so fun um i i couldn't yeah i couldn't tell you uh, i like i don't mind booker now now i kind of enjoy booker because he's like a personality but like back then i, like I was like i don't podcast, give a shit interview stuff he does pretty um, chill Nice, nice, nice. But I thought it was interesting because right now, Corey Graves is away from television for his honeymoon. What? And the person who replaced him on Raw this past week was Jerry the Could King Lawler. So, Yo, how, he's how a heel now, which is weird. Jerry the King? Yeah. Oh. He's like cheering on for the oh. Miz, during like his stuff. I mean, but that's which always been Jerry's deal. You know, he's always kind of been like that. Like Yeah, but like, story. remember, he had a feud with um, the Miz where he's like, Yo, Miz, you fucking suck, dude. The Miz. Um, the Miz. The Miz. I guess you're right. I guess you're right. But this was what fucking like 2013, 22. Not even. It was like probably like 2011, man. 
time oh. has passed. We can grow in the course of 10 years, okay? No, it has to be like, to be like AW, where um, they're in one segment, like, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like a backstage segment. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the entire reason why I hate you, man. I'm sorry, Punk. It's fair. It's fair. How was that bodyguard in that one promo where you fought Stephanie McMahon in their office? You know that's now gonna be a you. thing, right? An MJF Samoa Joe feud where the the impetus. Um, actually, I was looking up um old videos of like Brian Kendrick. As I don't you know do. why. <laughs> yeah, and um, there was this one segment where Brian Kendrick was naked, right? Oh, cool. Around Stephanie McMahon. And he's like, yo, Stephanie, nice to meet you. I'm Brian Kendrick. And then the security guard bringing him out, one of them was Daniel Bryan. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> legit, I think if Brian Kendrick is to go back to AEW, which probably won't happen, um, they got a storyline there of Brian Danielson versus Brian Kendrick where he escorted him naked out of Seven Band's office. What, why was he naked? No idea. It was like some episode of 2003 SmackDown. Was was he harassing Stephanie? Was that the point? I, don't, I think he wanted a job on SmackDown or something like that. I think that was a. So I was like, oh, let me show my cock real quick. This <laughs> let me show my cock to you, girl. <laughs> Yo, that's awesome. Good for Daniel Bryan. Oh my god. Good All for right. Daniel. Um, because they they trained together, right? Weren't they both at Shawn Michaels Wrestling yeah, Academy? Yeah. Okay, okay. Lance Cade, I think too. Let's go, Lance Cade. Yeah. Really? That's cool. Yeah, that's Cade. What about crazy. I didn't what's know his who who was um Brian Kendrick's tag team partner? Paul London? Paul London? Was, was he also there? No, am I making that up? No fucking idea, dude. No, that's so sad. That's so sad. Um wh why why were we talking about naked Brian Kendrick, Steven? Um I was talking about long term booking where oh! the long term booking is some stupid segment twenty years ago. Uh huh. So long term booking yeah. was Jerry Lawler getting diverticulitis, you're saying? No, the long-term booking was him hating the oh, man in 2011. Oh, oh, you're right, you're right, How'd you're you right. How did you forget? How did you forget? You are so right. Um, Steven, also in this week of pro wrestling, January 7th, uh -huh. 2015, um, I'm, fa I'm happy I found this, okay? Um, this was it? about the time where the Ryback <gasps> went on Monday guy? Night Raw. The big guy. Um, he was on Monday Night Raw? Was he fired at this point? Not yet, not yet. Not he yet. was on Monday Night Raw, and he cuts his promo talking uh, about the secret and how the book the secret changed his life do you remember this no what is a uh, secret what's the book the book is all about like manifesting things right like it's it's uh, the law of attraction so you attract the energy you put into the world so like <laughs> think thin thoughts a uh, mind over uh -huh. matter all that kind of stuff the big guy is known for his big thinking hell yeah he is hell yeah he is yeah. um but his it's promo is basically him being like he was super depressed for a period of time after he was first fired by WWE. Um, he didn't oh. talk to his family for a year. He was isolated. He was alone. He had nothing to do with himself. Um, but then he read The Secret, and his life changed. Um, good for him. Good for him. Um, I do regretfully uh, report that uh -huh. it was also this week the authority returned and fired him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's sad. Ryback, dude. That guy was just reading a book and like self um curing himself from his depression i know and I then he gets fired immediately he really does because by the way steven because remember back we talked about the survivor series uh which happened uh -huh. a few weeks ago uh of course back in 2014. uh it, it was like about a month prior to this episode of raw right um right and in the main event of that match it was team authority versus team cena where if team cena won the authority would leave they would no longer be in charge it would no longer be in power um they are already back a month later. Yo. Good do you, for them. Do you remember how and why they became reinstated? No idea. I honestly forget everything about this era. So, it's because Edge came back, you know? And this right, is right. Uh, uh, when Edge was not allowed to do anything physical because right, he's concussion right. prone. He might die. Um, mm -hmm. And they had a segment where Seth Rollins was about to curb stomp Edge. And Darn. the only way he would agree not to is if John Cena agreed to reinstate the authority about to murder edge exactly and so in order to save edge you know so he could he could go <laughs> on and live to another save day edge from manslaughter <laughs> it was not manslaughter that's murder it's mur yeah it's first degree murder it really is it really is that man's a father that man is a husband and seth rollins oh, was threatening murder Vikings. if he couldn't get his triple h he, he, he couldn't get his stephanie back you know um and he got them he got them the the 
Authority was reinstated by John Cena to save Edge's life, and thank God for it. Thank God. Thank, thank God. For your service. Um, and so the Authority's first order of business being back was to f to fire Ryback, Dolph Why Ziggler, Ryback? and Eric Rowan. Um, oh, was Ryback in the 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 team, right? That, yeah, that they way? were all on the okay, Team okay. Cena team. Which why not, not just Cena, fire though. Cena? Yeah, like simply. An asshole, dude. Well, these guys suck. <sighs> I guess so. I guess so. Um, and which the saddest part was on WWE social media, they had Renee uh -huh. Young conduct backstage interviews with everyone who had just been fired. So like there are these little like minute long interviews of everyone like crying, and it's so sad. It's oh. devastating. They got the tear. They got what's that tear drops that they're called? Where like just put them in their eyes and they're exactly. just crying all of a sudden. Exactly. Like yo, how do you feel about being fired? Ryback? I don't know. I don't think that Ryback, the Ryback, had to use any tears. I don't think he had to use fake tears. I think he legit thought he was fired. He used his yeah, no one smartened <laughs> him up. <laughs> Poor guy, man. He. I mean, I think so. He knows how to think now, right? Because of the book he was reading. Well, yeah, he read the secret, and so. Yeah, um, he must know about. You know? Yeah. Well, it was fucked up because Renee was like, "So you were just telling us about how your life changed and you're a really positive guy. Um, so what does that mean now?" <laughs> and and like, was like, oh, asking fuck. a cancer patient. Um, so you were a pretty cool guy back in life. Yeah. What's yeah, yeah. cancer now, man? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome. It was very kind of Renee. It was very kind of Renee. Um, a great journalist. Also, this week, Stephen, um, during oh. the hiatus, the Atus of Lucha Underground. Uh, the Ascension made their main roster debut after being called up from NXT. Connor and Victor. Yo, big debut. Was it a squash match? N well, no. They had a, like a more 50-50 match, I'm pretty sure, on their first episode That's with the champions, Miz and Mizdow, whom they That's beat. That's crazy. What the heck? You know, but they, they beat, beat them. them? They beat them. They beat Miz and Mizdow. And oh, so that's big. they went on to like on the next couple of Raws and Smackdowns just have squash Ooh. matches. Um, and they had one of those this week on Raw. Uh, the only thing is... They had them cut a promo before the squash match. What they say? What they say? So, they're shit talk because I guess like they they're getting all the comparisons to Demolition and the Road Warriors, right? I mean, that's not bad. No, know, it's like... not bad at all. But um, they're cool. getting all the comparisons, so they figure let's address this in our promo. Um, <laughs> and so Connor gets on the microphone and he says, "Hey Vic, what's that old saying?" And Vic says, Oh, what a rush. And um, the crowd goes mild. Yeah, but you know, like they're quoting the Road Warriors, you know, it's it's cool. It's like, okay, awesome. And yeah, then I love, I love that. Connor I says, that. No, Vic, it's more like, What a joke. Oh, shoot, dude. MLG, like, burr, burr, burr. there was no reaction, Steven. <laughs> Dang. Um, you know, if they were to do that in AEW, it would get a reaction. Hell yeah, it would. Like, ironically, it probably would get a reaction. Well, yeah, because it, it, would, well, it would be ironically, because if you fucking said that, it'd be so stupid, you know? But yeah. the fact is, someone wrote that for Connor and expected it to get a reaction. And you know what, Steven? It did get a reaction, because on Twitter, fucking uh -huh. Lance Storm went crazy. Lance Storm what? got on Twitter and he huh. flipped out because it was too disrespectful to the Road Warriors Hawk and Animal. <laughs> Lance Storm, let me just get offended for Hawk and Animal real quick, guys. All right, uh, what the fuck, dude? And like at first, I was like, oh my gosh, like w w this must have been a big deal. Like, did, did Hawk just pass away? Because that's fucked up. Like, if if Hawk had like passed away that week and then they like did that, uh -huh. obviously that's not cool. I looked right, it up. Makes sense. Hawk died in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Lance Storm just wants to get offended for somebody, you know. Like he wants his, he wants his spotlight. I was blown away. I guess so. A very, very um progressive dude. That I Lance guess Storm so. Is. But fucking never ever joke about the Road Warriors if you're hanging out with Lance Storm, you know. Respectful dude. One is that like a bad joke about like them dying? Just what a no! joke. What a bunch of jokesters. It's oh my god. They legitimately said nothing offensive about the Road Warriors. It's fuck. Oh my god. Uh, maybe maybe I'm getting worked. Maybe it was him being facetious, even though it wasn't. You think it's a build-up for a Lance Storm match with the Ascension? Yo, did I miss that episode of Raw? That's Could crazy. Be. I hope it's just a... It's two-on-one at a squash with Lance Storm going over. <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. That's awesome, bro. I want to see that. The Ascension. Book them, boys. Book Those guys are going to go far in their career. Hell yeah, they are. Hell yeah, they are. Um, Steven, there wasn't too much going on in January of 2015, at least not in the first week, so I don't have too much more to talk about. 
aside from the fact that on January 5th, um, Wrestle Kingdom 9 took place live no way. from the Tokyo Dome. Um, and like, how many people saw it? What I don't know. What do you mean how many people how, saw it? How many people saw it and like thought it was really good versus how many people saw it on Reddit links and Twitter videos? I don't know, I man. Thought, Yo, I love New Japan. This company Yo. is sick, bro. Yo. I hate WWE. It's for children. I watch real wrestling, okay? I this watch was clips on Twitter, guys. Right about that time. This was like probably the first Wrestle Kingdom, I think, where like wrestling fandom was like really tuned in, right? Yeah. Um, Because on the show, uh, we had AJ Styles beating Naito, which is a big match, of course. That's sick. That's cool. We had Shinsuke Nakamura beating uh, Ibushi for the Intercontinental title, which Ooh. also very sick match. In the main event, we had Tanahashi versus uh -huh. Okada for the IWGP heavyweight title, which... What? Hell Who yeah. Won? Who won? Tanahashi won. He was the champion no and he retained. That's great. I know. That's crazy, um, dude. But th maybe the most confusing one for me is that they had oh. Kenny Omega fight Taguchi, which... Is this when Kenny Omega was, like, hot, or...? Well, it's, li like, a, a, not... Like, a year later, he's going to be taking over the Bullet Club, you know? Okay, so this is, like, when he was, like, nerd still, or... I, in the bullet club already. I'm assuming nerd because Taguchi is also a fucking nerd. Taguchi uh, sucks, Steven. I don't know if you know. Taguchi is uh, is horrible. Um, he was the guy the Trevor anger. was teamed up with before he, he went to the dub. Um, no, this, is, this is a Poggers match, bro. Oh, okay. Five star. Five stars. Yeah, is that Dave what you give it? Sir. Omega versus yeah. Taguchi five stars? I mean, honestly, probably. You're right. You're right. Um, that's really all I had. I didn't watch Wrestle Kingdom 9. The first Wrestle Kingdom I watched wasn't till. I think 11, so... Wow. I know. It's tough. Imagine. It is Not so tough. Not watching wrestling. I know. I'm a terrible person. Fucking loser. Steven, um, I yes. don't know why you would know of any other news stories from 2015. Um, but if no, you do, do throw them my way, because I was struggling um, so bad to find shit. Um, something might have happened in TNA, you know? What happened to TNA? What happened? I don't know. Let's, oh, who knows? I don't fucking old. know. I don't care. No, let's I don't even... Use, I don't want to know. Quick, no? No, I don't, know about I don't even January. know if they're on TV yet. They're like switching to Destination America That's... at this point. They might still be on YouTube. You, know, you do not care about January 5 of 2015 Impact? I don't. You know Why what, are you they know competing what happened? with WrestleMania? You know what happened? TNA One Night only happened, okay? All right. You know what happened? You know what happened? Um, Samoa Joe beats Kenny King, you know? That's pretty cool. Um, Did you know that Kenny King was on The Bachelor? Was he actually? Yeah, my sister. One time my dad and I were watching Ring of Honor, and my sister uh, came and I was like, holy shit, is that Kenny King? And we were like, oh my god, yes, sister, it is. Oh um, my god. I know. Known, being your Honor World Tag Team Champion, Kenny King. Let's go. Um, Gail Kim defeated Madison Rain and Angelina Love in a three-way match. Let's go. Um, the great Sadana beats Austin Aries. Okay, Steven, I'm fucking done. Um, we're gonna get to the current um, events. Wow. Um, Yo, Steven. Hello. What? What? What's up, man? What's up, man? We got so many what current events. This week. Oh, in wrestling. Just an endless number of things, Steven. So Wait, many. 15th. 2022 so many exciting things um do you want to start off with what happened on dynamite last week i feel like what that might dynamite be the video last week. it was the a big, stack dynamite the, yeah the great ending right the best ending for any okay. dynamite so whatsoever. the start was pretty sick at least we got pentagon yeah. jr versus cm punk which is legitimately like if you cool. were to ask like 16 17 year old me to book a dream match that would never happen it's that uh -huh. like those are my yeah. two favorite wrestlers fighting so like i haven't watched live dynamite um, in forever, right? Like, I just, I don't watch wrestling really anymore unless it's like a big pay-per-view. Um, I watched this episode of Dynamite Live because I wanted to see uh, CM Punk versus Pentagon Jr. And and so right. I, I cried so many tears, Steven, just buckets right. all over. It was it was so emotional When CM me. Punk came out, took his shirt off, it's like, oh, the tears, the tears. And when Pentagon came out, it's like, oh, took my right eye off. started twitching. Oh. <laughs> True, 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 true. My left true. eye started twitching too. You are when so CM right. When CM Punk did a grapple and they both teared up like waterfalls. <laughs> you are so beautiful. right. It was beautiful. It was pro wrestling is art, Steven. Pro wrestling is art. Um, Have you seen those on YouTube? 
I think it's like this one YouTube channel, right? That tries to make that tries to make AW like some stupid like art, like you know, like those um what's it called movie like analyst channels mm -hmm. that like make it like art. This guy does that but with AW. So like every like thumbnail would be a picture of, like some AW match and have like big white letters, refreshing or epic or king, <laughs> something stupid. It's king? Like, I don't know. It's so dumb. What? Some weird. I, d I, I don't, don't I don't understand. You'll have to send me a link, Stephen. You, yeah. You'll have to enlighten me. I'm very confused. Yeah. Um, I hope they make a video for Penta versus AW. Punk, though. I really do. It's gonna. It's gonna be called Five Star. Five Star. That's the title of it. Yeah. Let's go. The match was sick, by the way. The match was badass mm -hmm. between the two of them. It was like a sprint, and I was really happy it was. Um, the other notable good thing on the show, I think, was all the MJF and Wardlow stuff going Ooh. on. Um, what was it? MJF uh, suffered the first ever count out loss in AEW history. Is as it to 20 or to 10 in AEW? It was a 20 count. Oh, um, that sucks. <laughs> Who loses to a 20 count? Right? I, maybe it was a 10 count. Maybe it was a 10 I feel count. Like the, does the 20 count only exist? Just like, all right, we want to do more shit outside now? Yeah, I think it was a 10 count, actually. I, I think I lied right there. Okay. Um, but. Uh, he was fighting uh, the captain, Sean Dean, who is the only man that MJF has lost to in the last year. Um, mm -hmm. oh, I guess aside from Punk. But uh, that was because... you remember? It was fucking... It was the best booking ever. It was MJF versus Sean Dean. CM Punk came uh. out and just fucking kicked Sean Dean so MJF would, would lose. Hey. Which is hey, awesome. Jeff. Let me let you lose real quick. Actually, no, I don't think he just kicked him. He fucking, he oh, straight up hit him with the GTS, which is so unnecessary. You know, he oh, could have just like slapped him or something. It would have done it like, just but no. Him. Exactly. Exactly. He really is. But, um, the match ended up getting interrupted about midway through, uh, and it cut the backstage and there were a bunch of these security guards laid out on the ground, one of them shirtless. And then they cut oh. to the crowd, um, because MJF is there, he's gloating. And right behind him appears a hulking figure in a mask and an AEW t-shirt, an AEW security t-shirt even. The mask is removed. Makes sense because you guys are buff on AEW. Exactly. It's Wardlow. Wardlow oh is there, Steven. Um, oh, the moms go wild. Yo. Insane. Wardlow did the sickest ass thing. He hopped over the barricade and he MJF like ran into the ring to escape him and then ran out the ring. Like in the... Like, Here's the ring corner. He went in one side and came out the other side, sort of like how Bailey does her DDTs. Um, and Wardlow fucking followed right after him, and he fucking just like slid through. Like he, it, it was beautiful. I don't know how the fuck that big man did that. It was awesome. Um, oh, Wardlow is crazy, dude. That guy's that guy is insane. Let's go. He chases after MJF, um, but here is where all the security comes out. Like at least twenty security guards just dogpiling on top of Wardlow. Um, but this creates yep. a, a uh, roadblock in getting back to the ring because MJF has to get past Wardlow in order to get there. Uh, but Bryce Remsburg oh. is on like is on the eight count. He's at nine. MJF grabs the microphone. He says, Bryce, 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 says, Bryce, Bryce, hey. whatever hey, TK is paying you, I will double it. I will triple it. Do yeah. not count to 10. Then Bryce stops. Ew. He puts his hands down and he looks around at the crowd. And then he counts to 10, Steven. Um, oh my gosh. The ref is so nutty, dude. Let's go. Um, but it's I wish it was I, Aubrey. She would have done like a jumping jack 10. Like dude, a, fucking. Like somersault jumps up. 10. <laughs> You're so <laughs> right. Oh my god. You were very right. <laughs> Sorry, Aubrey. She would have done the stardust. That's cool. <laughs> my handstand. <laughs> handstand. <laughs> Boop. Let's 10. go. 10. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Um, but oh. no, I love Wardlow so much, Steven. He is awesome. He's sick. He is. He is. He's very cool. But he... makes the moms go insane because he's so oh, hot and attractive. Hell yeah. The other big match, though, that this uh, card was, was built around, Steven, was the main uh -huh. event of the evening for the Ring of Honor Television Championship. Oh my it gosh, was... the title. That, that, that title makes no sense, though, because like, it's the television title, right? For what show? The show that's coming soon. That may or may not the be show. on television. You know. It makes sense. Just, I feel like they just rename it at this point, right? I don't no. know. Maybe. If you rename it, it kind of loses like its thing. 
Yeah, they could name it the the Ring of Honor Pure Championship or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, yeah, something really something. cool. Mm -hmm. Um, it's Joe versus Minoru Suzuki. Samoa Joe versus Minoru Suzuki. Suzuki is the defending champion. He of course won the title from Rhett Titus at Supercard Fuck. of Honor. Um, and uh, the match is, I mean, it's it's kind of what you would expect from the two of them. It's like these insane men just slapping each other back and forth, like stiffing one another, you know. Um, and again, like it's fine, like it's it's a whatever match. Like I, I was cool with it. But the ending, though, the, that ending. But the ending, go because right at oh ringside God. for the match was the duo of Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal. Okay, and Jay Lethal has like a present in his hands, like a like a, a wrapped gift box. And yeah. the two of them hop the barricade after the match ends because Samoa Joe wins the title from Suzuki. Um, mm -hmm. And they're like, Joe, 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 we wanted to be the first ones to congratulate you. Um, and we actually, we got you a gift as well. Oh, that's nice from Jay. Jay Lethal pulls the top off the box. It's his middle <gasps> finger, Steven. He oh my flips God. Him oh my God. That's the most AEW thing ever. And then it hit 10 o'clock and the show was over. <laughs> <laughs> No, you're missing out on the greatest thing ever. Oh, you're Former right. Former basketball player came out and mm -hmm. was like, yo, I'm giant. And yo. he beats the shit out of Joe. And then someone compared it to when the Great Khali squashed Rey Mysterio's head. Let's go. And then people compared it to the Great Khali, which might be racially influenced, I feel like. What? Um, But. Yeah, it's just the race, not the fact that he's over seven foot. Just no. race. Uh -huh. No. Um, Steven, you are motivated. so right because Tony Khan was so smart. He knew yeah. that this episode of Dynamite was so stacked. He got he permission knew? to go 30 minutes over their allotted time. So oh instead of gosh. having to end the show right at 10 p.m. Eastern, what he was allowed to go genius. until 1030. Um, and so it's worth it. Yeah, worth I didn't it. see that. I was watching on DVR. So mine ended with the middle finger from, from Jay Lethal. Um, you know what tough. Tony Khan said What's on that? some interview thing? He said that he he could have done the sing debut better. But it wasn't his idea to do lights out. It was a 30-year veteran. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Steven, yeah. Let's talk about it. Let's 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 go in a little bit more detail. So basically, after Jay yeah. Lethal hits him with the middle finger, which is crazy. I didn't think they could do that on TV. That's that's Insane. edgy stuff. Um, the lights the go out. Finger. And the crowd gets excited. There have been rumors all day that someone's gonna debut it. The main rumors are it's gonna be what Cesaro. It? It's gonna be Claudio Castagnoli. Cesaro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the um Kenny King, maybe? Maybe, maybe. Oh my gosh. And the lights come back on. Huh? And it, it's a seven foot giant in the ring. Oh my gosh. That no How one do you recognizes. Book seven foot giant in the ring when there's like Evan Yarosh is like under six foot. Exactly. That's exactly. Crazy. And he just, you're right, he grabs Samoa Joe's head and he just does the claw. He's um, squashing like a watermelon, dude. He really Joe's like, did. oh, my head. It's you dying from really being crushed. Did. But people are upset um, that this was how they ended Dynamite because it was a weird ass ending for one. Um, and then two, like, why'd you have the lights go out? Like, the it's lights. Like we said, like, oh my remember God. we talked about, like, um, a few weeks ago with Buddy Matthews? Mm -hmm. Everybody gets the lights out. Who knows why? <laughs> yeah. Everybody gets it. But, like, at least with Buddy Matthews, he's getting a reaction because yeah. people know who he is. No one knew who Sat Nam Singh was. Hey. Hey, for, he's never played ever in basketball. He was drafted to the right. NBA and then was no. deemed so helpless, like so useless. He so never shit. played. He was put in their G League and, and, and couldn't sh score for shit. And he, you don't like the AEW version of Almost, dude? What's wrong with you? I didn't say anything. I'm a fucking a huge Satnam Singh guy dude, now. Okay. I think every okay. time okay. he comes out going forward, the lights should go out. I think it should be that every single time wanna, he comes out. I want to be like that one kid who I saw on Twitter the other day with like posting this picture with Veer or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like all face. He's all dressed up as Veer. Oh like, hell yeah! I want to be that guy. Like I want that guy to be my role model. Dude. I want Singh to be my dude. Okay? Satnam. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just like how that kid wanted Veer to be his guy. <laughs> Your guy is Satnam Singh. Yeah, that's my dude. That's that makes a right lot there. of sense. That makes a now lot of gonna sense. He's going to win the Ring of Honor TV Championship title. It's going to be sick. Let's go. But you are right. Tony Khan did apologize for it, um, which is fucked up. Um, Tony Khan, was it was it a weird thing to book? Shit. Was it bad booking? Was it weird? Yes. Yes, it was. Very much so. Tony Khan should not apologize. 
Tony Khan should go all the way with it. Tony Khan should fucking, again, every single time Satnam ever comes out, you turn those lights off. And you have it be a big reveal. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Wrestling has one big guy. Yo. <laughs> and then Miri comes like, and sat and sing, dude. Let's he's out there squashing go. heads, squashing those vanilla midgets. The guy's mean insane, oh, dude. Oh, let's go. Um, but Tony did say, like, um, I wasn't the I guys, I didn't come up with the idea, guys. That wasn't me, guys. Um, it was it was, wasn't it was me. a 30-year veteran who came up with it. It wasn't me though, okay? Um, it Why wasn't it happen, Tony. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. You know what's even crazier? Um, that Tony Denver Khan Rosa. got a response. No, 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 no. What's even crazier no, 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 no. is that someone responded uh, to Tony Khan's tweet where he's like, guys, I didn't come up with it. I just signed off on it. Someone responded and said, no, Tony. That's why you need to hire a booker that's done this before. Tony Khan responded. Uh, Tony Khan said, you need to hire this ratio. Did he get ratioed at least? He ratioed the guy quite severely, Steven. Okay, but like at that point, it's like, I mean, I feel like if you're gonna ratio someone, you have to be like less than them, you know? Because like if you're like Tony Khan, you're a no, you're, dude, you're right? a billionaire. Then, like, you have bots, you know? You have all those oh anti AEW bots at your side, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they're gonna they're gonna be the reason why you ratio them. Like you can't really ratio some dude on no, Twitter. It's if you're, fucking like, a insane. You fucking it's insane. Idiot. You know, I love is, him. You know what the thing is? There's probably people that be like, yo, Tony Khan, you're fucking epic, bro, okay? I'm you one of those totally people. totally rich this nerd on Twitter, dude. Yo, I again, Fuck, I yeah. am people. I am that guy. You know, I'm going to be there tweeting at Tony. I'm, I'm telling people him. people who cry during wrestling matches. What? What? Don't you know say what's that. even crazier about wrestling matches? What? Um, Thunder Rosa not having one Thunder in like Rosa. a month. Um, That's pretty cool. She oh, she did have like that segment ever. with Nyla Rose, didn't she? Um, Her first segment in like forever. She had a backstage segment where it was it was more Vicky Guerrero. Yay! Yo, my girl, Vicky, Vicky baby. Um, and then Thunder Rosa smashed Nyla Rose's face into a cake. Um, and or maybe it was the other way around. I don't I don't know what happened. I didn't pay much attention. Uh, I don't care. It was like dynamite, <laughs> man. Yeah. I don't know. Um, there have been some name changes in the WWE. That's a popular thing. There have, right there now. have, but let's not get there quite yet, Steven. Let's not get there quite yeah. yet, okay? Um, I want to talk about what happened outside of WWE, outside of AEW even. I want to talk TNA? about what happened about Impact? in Major League Wrestling, okay? <gasps> MLL, MLW. I don't know how you got MLL from that. Um, MLL. <laughs> MLW, yes. Because apparently, MLW. MLW. two men have yeah. been released from the MLW roster. Um, Who's in it? Those two men are L.A. Park and El Hijo what? del L.A. Park. Um, apparently at the MLW show WrestleMania weekend in Dallas, the two oh. of them got chairs and just started like shooting on their opponents. Um, Wait, what? Yeah. L.A. Park and his son got chairs and beat the shit out uh -huh. of Jacob Fatu and like Alex Hammerstone um, and just made them bleed the hard way. Um, and like didn't apologize and were thusly fired, which is awesome. <laughs> what? Yeah. What a way to go, dude. Yeah. Get the shit out of your coworkers. That's and it's, what's even cooler is like imagine you're El Hijo del L.A. Park, and it's like, mm. sure I got fired, but fucking, I got my dad's permission to do it. So you know. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't know. I'd feel pretty secure. I'd feel pretty That's secure. That's how you leave a job. You like, get a chair, beat the shit out of your coworker, and like, all right. Hell thanks, yeah. Thanks, guys. I'm Hell out of here. Oh, yeah. Peace, you baby. Mwah. Then you book it. Um, Steven, what the hey, fuck? Please. Why'd that happen? Uh, well, you see. Don't um, do that. Don't sneeze. It gets sneeze. some attention by leaving a company in a really bad way. Mm. So they're going to be on control your narrative next week. Okay. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Can we book them for following Lucha? I hope we should start a fun lucha wrestling promotion. No, I don't FLP. think so. I was just gonna have them show up to your house with steel chairs. Um, yo, I hope that's okay. They're gonna beat up. What do you mean? Who are they? It's you, Steve. They're gonna beat up. You, what do you mean? Why would you beat me up? Because I, I would have paid them. You can't too. do it legally. You, you can. We're in Texas. The, the license isn't. Shh. I, shoot. Yeah, man. It's not that tough. It's oh, not no. that tough. I'm about to fall for a shoot, man. This sucks. Honestly, honestly. Um, but Steven, back to WWE. On NXT oh. this past week, 
uh, a whole way. bunch of stuff happened. Level okay? up or regular NXT? I didn't watch Level Up, man. You don't watch Level Up? No. You call yourself a wrestling journalist? You don't watch Level didn't Up? Didn't Roxy have her first fight on, on Level Up? No, her name's Roxanne now. Didn't Roxanne have her first fight on Level Up? Yes. Did that already air or is that going to air soon? Yes. You are a like, faker fan than I, Steven, because like I right know now, the answer I think, to that question. Like right now it's airing, I'm I, pretty sure, right? Why would it be airing right now? It airs after SmackDown? I guess the 205 did. Oh. I didn't know 205 still did by the end. I have no clue. Mm, I, I have know. no idea. I do know, though, Steven, that oh. a, a certain main roster star made her debut in NXT. Or maybe re <gasps> her return. Who? Who and returned that, to uh, NXT? Our girl, Natty Neidhart. Hey, oh my god, sick, I love Natty. Dude. Um she showed up. NXT was so cool. Let's go. She showed up, Steven. Do you, do you know why uh -huh. she showed up? Do you know what she's done at NXT? Why did she show up to NXT? Was it to confront some younger talent? It was to confront some younger talent. That younger talent is the love of your life. It is Cora Yo. Jade. That's sick, Aww. dude. And it wasn't the confrontation awesome. at first. It was very sweet. Um, it was the Aww. two of them like exchanging niceties and and Cora Jade being like, "You're you're like one of my biggest role models, Natty." And then Natty being yeah, like, "Yeah, I oh watched on Total Divas, Natty. You're so good yeah. on that show, man." What's crazy is, I, did you see the tweet? Did you yeah. see the tweet from like 2013? Of it was Cora Jade. She was front row at a wrestling show, and Natty took oh. a selfie with her, and Natty posted it on her Twitter, and was like, "Hey, wow. Cora, it's so nice to see you. I can't wait to see That's you at the next AEW live show." AEW booking right there. I know it really is. It really is. Um, so Natty was like referencing all this stuff. Um, huh. And she was like, "So I, there's like a lot of um, potential here in the 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 uh, NXT women's roster, um, and but but you're dragging it down." And she beat the <gasps> shit out of Cora. Oh just, shit! Not my girl Cora. So sad. Well, would she do that? I don't know, would, man. Is this racially motivated? I don't. Know. I think it probably was racially motivated. I didn't want to say anything, but I'm glad you're finally Ugh. speaking truth to power here on the podcast. Ugh. Thank Ugh. you so much. Awful, man. So awful. Why would they beat up Cora, man? The Canadian on American violence. It's really too much at this point. I don't. I don't it's know why we good. continue to depict good. it on the television programs. I thought we were over this back in 1997, but here we are. <sighs> It's annoying. I thought Cody Cody came back too, man. Like, what the heck? I mean, honestly, you're so right. You're so right. Um, how do you feel, though, Steven, that our two girls, our two ladies of following Lucha, uh -huh. um, ladies they're Lucha. here and they're in a story together? It's sick. I think it's pretty... I think they're... What NXT 2.0 is doing right now is really sick. We're, like, old NXT. Yeah. Like, I think it's more unique. I would be so tempted to watch it if it weren't mm -hmm. two hours, you know? That's why you do what I do. Just watch the clips. I'm like, all right. That's good enough for me, man. I guess so. Because I am excited teeth, too now. Watch three minute clips. Like, all right, sick. I'm a wrestling fan now. We yeah, exactly. I watch wrestling clips. I don't watch wrestling. We talked I watch last three minute week clips on YouTube about how the NXT Tag Team Champions were yeah. stripped of their titles. It was Wesley and Nash Carter. Um, they were stripped also of their titles. Also bad for Wesley, man. Well, these things happen. Um, oh. But so this week we had to crown new ones, Steven. Uh -huh. And the winners and new NXT tag titles are a brand new debuting tag Gosh. team from NXT UK. They Ooh. are pretty deadly. I mean, who are they? I don't know. Remember last week we talked about that team that did the, the move called the Fratliner? I yeah. think it's them. I think. They're pretty deadly? Yeah, and then today okay. they posted a photo of the two of them in bed in robes together. Um, Yo, that's with sick. their titles around their dicks, and it says uh -huh. the morning after, which I really liked. I think Pretty Deadly are <laughs> I my like favorite the tag dude team. With the banana on his crotch. Hell yeah. Dude, I love this team. This team is sick, dude. I'm just so glad this team exists. I, I we love need more them. teams like this. I love them so much. Pretty yeah, Deadly are my Creed guys. Brothers, dude. Honestly, those nerds. They we are nerds. Men. Finally, finally. Um, Real team like this in the Boros Do you think Pretty Deadly already has merchandise out? I mean, they're NXT UK, right? So yeah. Probably not. They're Damn NXT it. UK. This sucks. I mean, ass. Did, did Blake and Murphy have like merch when they won the title? Did Blake and Murphy? Oh, uh, no. There's no way. Right. Yeah, no way. In hell. So. But they were also bad guys. Pretty deadly are obviously going to be faces, Steven. Right. You see their face? They're so pretty. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. They're so Two pretty. pretty boys. Um, that that was NXT. <laughs> uh, on Raw. NXT, y'all. Well, let's talk about those name changes you were talking about, Steven, because there was a big one right. on Raw. What was what it? What was the big one? Was you tell me. Fury, I think, right? He's like, yo, 
it's like I think some comments like, "All right, guys, we're interviewing Austin Theory now." And there's no, no, dude. Vince doesn't like that name. Now it's Theory. Yo, I am so now cool. Now my theme makes no sense. A town, and <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> it's a town, a town, a, a town. <laughs> you are so right. Hey, dude, it's a time. Let's go. I hope they it's keep that time, theme song dude. for eternity, Steven. That yeah. man's gonna be main eventing WrestleMania one day with the fucking A Town theory. Down theme. Let's. I think there's a sick name. I go. Think it's, it's like, I, I think um, like. I think it's cool when they turn down names when it's like more unique, you know? Mm -hmm. Like kind of like a Ricochet is a cool name already. Yeah. And like, like I think Cesaro's name changes a lot better than Montana Cesaro in my Antonio. opinion. Or is yeah. like Audio? Is that no? Cause it's Indian name. I think and Neville wasn't the bad one either. You know, Neville was cool really name. sick too. Rusev, Rusev was, was a smart sick. decision. Yeah. But the thing with fucking um, what's his name with Theory, is that it's not good. <laughs> um, theory. Theory as a name is. Maybe, Riddle. Like we've been talking a lot about shitty name changes. Theory yeah. is by far the worst, but Theory because A Town because it has like in story reason for it. It makes uh, it a lot more digestible. Where I'm like, okay, that's, that's funny. Oh, not gonna last that long either. I assume maybe, maybe it's like a story thing. Yeah, because like again, right now the idea is that Vince is traumatized from his match with Stone Cold Steve Austin. I like how, how they built up the worst center stuff from Vince as like a thing. <laughs> it's it's like, no, he fucking died from it, dude. Hell yeah, he <laughs> That's did. That's what happened. Hell yeah, he did. Um, so basically now, uh, Vince doesn't want to call Austin Theory Austin Theory anymore because of the name Austin. And so he's just uh -huh. Theory. So again, like, because they have an explanation for it, I'm very open to it. But oh, fuck, Theory's a bad name. Like Theory. That's so, like, I I would be hard pressed to come up riddle. with the worst one. Riddle's pretty horrible, too. Like, they're, they're both very similar, just generic common does words anyone that we use call every day. him riddle though i feel like people still call him matt riddle people call him matt riddle okay okay they never so. say his name is matt riddle on tv but people just call him matt riddle Yo, you want to talk about a good name change what's a good name seth change? freaking rollins okay seth freaking rollins dude. freaking rollins that's a that's good so one good you know what's happened on raw this week that was pretty sick they got rid of the cody vader Unfortunately, that's so sad. I get more pyro though, which is pretty sick. <laughs> I've been crying ever since. Steven, I'm so so fucking sad that Raw didn't open this week with Cody's head <laughs> peeking out of the bottom <laughs> of the screen. I was I'm so, so sad, sad with the Cody Vader. Now they gave him like the Goldberg pyro. Hell, I mean, yeah, I I'm cool with the pyro too. Fucking give him everything. Bring that choir <laughs> I fucking back. Love Cody. I have you heard of what Cody got from the contract? What do you mean? Um, one of the things he's got in the contract was his own bus. Yo. So like you got he's he has his own bus and he gets like fucking six pyros whenever he comes out every day now. Let's it's sick, go. Dude. I can't wait until Cody. like Cody is legit, just like back sort of floating in the mid card with Dolph Ziggler, but he has his own see, private the bus. Is, like, you the know? thing is about Cody is like they gave him so much shit. There's no way he goes to become a mid card. There's no right? way, but think about how funny that is. You're fucking you're Dolph Ziggler. You he didn't leave the company. <laughs> and fucking this dude has a bus outside of every show you go to, gets private oh travel accommodations. God. That sucks ass. Randy Rhodes might be signing too with the company. Cool. Cool. I cannot wait to see Brandy Rhodes versus all my favorite women of WWE. Have you ever, have you ever seen um that one like um Scrabs Cody Rhodes gimmick? Or it was like Rhodes Industry. It's like it's like, hey guys, my name Cody Rhodes. This is my Brandy. I'm like Iron Man. You said this wrestler. is my Brandy? Yeah, something like that. Oh. Or I said this is Brandy. Or like I don't think you mentioned Brandy at all. This actually. is my Brandy. No, I think hey, that's probably what he weird, said. Like, it's just this weird gimmick where like Cody was pre pretending to be like Good some like gimmick. billionaire, like he was just wanting boy. to be Iron Man, yeah. Yeah. And okay. then it never happened. But it got leaked once, like years oh. ago. And WWE are like on the indies before Bullet Club. Uh, WWE. I think this is after Stardust or oh, okay. before Stardust. Okay, okay. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. Um mm -hmm. I mean, cool. I don't know. I'm excited about Cody. Have you noticed by the way that Cody's lisp is like a thousand times more prominent? Like Honestly, it's like the thing about Cody, every time you see him, his lisp gets more prominent and his tattoo gets brighter or bigger. Don't. You know? So don't. eventually I feel like there's gonna be a time when we see Cody. And all you're gonna see is this big tattoo just covering your entire screen and with a list on the side. It's gonna be insane. Oh, because I remember like when AEW first started, my dad like uh -huh. was taken aback by one of his promos. He's like, oh my gosh, does he not have a lisp anymore? And I was like, what <laughs> do you mean? Cody had a lisp? And my dad was like, yeah, that dude definitely had a lisp. And we looked it up and he did. Um, 
but like you didn't hear it at all. But now it's so obvious on Raw, and I don't. Maybe they have better microphones, you know? Maybe that's it. <laughs> I think it's like just better microphones and better like production. Damn, damn, damn. Um, but um, that was cool. Yeah. Dominic died on Raw this week. Dominic died. Champa yeah, got Richard called out officially. Um, the worst way possible. Well, that's not the it's worst like... way possible. He's friends with Ezekiel. There's no better way to debut on Raw. Okay. <laughs> His, was his third debut now in Raw? Or like his <laughs> There's fourth fucking one been now? a bunch of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, Alexa Bliss got married and NSYNC play at her wedding. That was pretty cool. Yo. I don't know, but is it NSYNC though? It's only like two of the members, you know, or three of them. They didn't have the big guy, JC, you know? Damn. For a second. I don't know. Or JC Chavez. It, what's, it's NSYNC. Is it really NSYNC, dude? Was it Backstreet really? Boys or was it NSYNC? It's NSYNC. Oh my god god i mean they're both the same band essentially you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. did they have the guy from celebrity big brother there i already forgot his name celebrity big brother was like a month ago oh that my one god dude from celebrity big brother. that one dude from celebrity big brother who was in sync that guy yeah you know that guy oh god um, I can't and then on smackdown um big news on smackdown yo on the dark match um la Knight got called up on the main roster yo la Knight to manage mace is managing the 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 former raw commentator mace let's go you know a guy who could already talk well yeah that's what i was confused by like they fucking made a huge mistake by making him raw commentator didn't they like yeah he only did the role for like a month or something like that with vic joseph but like sh like I'm, ha like you had that much confidence in him like three years ago to be a commentator but now you don't have confidence for him to be on the microphone cutting promos i don't understand it it's weird because like the other member of that like stable slapjack really talk. no not slapjack uh -oh. I'm talking about t-bar dude yo dominic dijakovic who dijak i just, I just want to know if they're going to keep the name t-bar and mace like that's what i'm curious about oh i, I really know. hope they keep t-bar's t-bar i like, really Dijakovic hope so to just fucking <laughs> shoot him in the foot to begin with i think so that's yeah. awesome that's so sad because fucking Dominic Dijak was awesome, you know? Like, insane. so sick. Uh, Keith Lee, that match was insane, dude. Yo. And uh, then I think Drew Gulag is like GM now or something on SmackDown. He is? Yeah. That was like today. Good for him. Good for him. Which I think it's sick. I think Gulag is really cool as like a dude because he's just like a fucking geek and I love him for I'm it. I'm surprised he's lasted so long Gulag. in WWE. All right? I'm surprised he didn't die in the last like spring break. Yeah. They did. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. We missed because he had the Brian match and that game like pushed up the stocks. Maybe. And then like he did like some, um what's it, the, the game stuff. He's really prominent in the WWE 2K game for mm -hmm. some reason. For some reason. He's like the, he's like the guy who teaches you how to wrestle Let's in the game. Go. That's pretty yeah, badass. It's insane. pretty bad ass steven i always think when right. i think of drew gulak i think of his period of time where he shaved his face and was enzo's foil that was incredible that and then fucking insane. enzo had to get fired he ruined it enzo was about to have the run of his life he had drew gulak there he had and, he had, gulak, and he was dude. fucking nia Jax. there's how'd you go up from there <laughs> You get Gabba Gulak and Nia Jax and you fucking die. You know, dude? Never, what he went out on top. Though? Maybe I appreciate it. He he peaked right there when he was fucking. <laughs> he was kissing Nia Jax. Gulak had his, his dick pic leak too. It's a fun fact. Gulak did? Yeah, if you want to see it, look it up. I, I'm not going to do that, but that's crazy. Who's he sending dick pics to? That I want to know. I want to be that person. Yeah, maybe he just leaked it. He was like, it's about time the internet legit, saw my I penis. I feel like, legit, there might be a wrestler who leaked their own news on purpose for the sake of just getting more popular. Like, that has to happen, right? I feel like. I mean, maybe. Like, who would do it? What weirdo would do that? I don't know, man. I don't. You can just pick one. It's just that's. Wait, now, I think now Trevor. Like, I think Trevor probably released his own. But the thing is, like now you can't even leak your own picks. Now you have an OnlyFans. You can make money off of it. It's like what's? There's no fun. Oh anymore. my god! If Trevor opened an OnlyFans, I would be broke, I mean, Steven. Dude, okay. If we talk about OnlyFans and like wrestlers, mm -hmm. I feel like Wardlow and like Drew McIntyre would make so much money. Yo, together they have a page together. Yo, oh my god! Yeah, like, Hugging and shit. They don't have to be naked. No, it's just, just hugging. In fact, they're wearing more clothes than they do on television. <laughs> they're wearing a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> they're wearing casual wear, and they're, they're just they're hugging. They're friends, you know. They're chill. They're chilling. They're, they're at the bar, bad. you know, hanging out with the boys. 
by crazy. the way, the, with how you're positioned with your camera right now, Dax yeah. Harwood is just staring so hard at your ass, Steven. <laughs> he is so mesmerized. Oh my god. What do you mean? He loves it. He really does. He really does. Oh, I do too. VR. Honestly. Uh, oh my god, you're so sweet, Steven. Um, by the way, AJ Styles fought Damian Priest on Raw this week. Um, That's cool. Notable uh, in its ending, Steven. Did you see how this match ended? How did this match end? Well, the match ended with AJ Styles going for a phenomenal forearm. However, it was oh. countered as Damian Priest hit like a big boot or like a forearm, like an anti-air, oh knocking AJ out of the sky. He goes to the Impressive. outside, and Damian Priest, he, he doesn't follow up on the attack. It said Damian walks to the middle of the wrestling ring. He gets oh. down on both his knees. He puts his arms out on both sides like Bray Wyatt used to do. Oh. And then the lights go out one and by one wins? well then then the lights come back and it's all purple and it's spooky <gasps> damien priest they zoom in on oh his face gosh. it's terrifying damien priest is there with shit. purple lighting we cut the commercial that's it did he win well we don't know that just we came back from commercial and we moved on did he lose well no we have other stuff to get to oh. we, we got to get to street profits and 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 alpha academy okay Oh shit, that match was insane, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Well, forget yeah. about Damian Priest, okay? Okay. Okay, good. I'm glad we're on the same page. That was Raw. Um, Yo, Raw sounded awesome this week. It's so sad because I was so excited to watch wrestling after WrestleMania. And God, am I not? This is why will you do what I do and just watch YouTube clips and like, I all right. Guess. Oh, I didn't watch Raw. Me. Don't worry, I did not watch Raw this week. I, I did just watch Good. clips. Um, but again, Dynamite I watched because legitimately Punk versus Penta is like, if I if I were to choose one wrestling match to make happen, it, it would be that. You know, like the, it just would be. Well, it would have been Velveteen Dream and Punk, but we move on. We um, we're not allowed to have. Dreams. Velveteen might be coming back though. You know, that'd he be pretty. Won't. He's not coming back, Steven. He's going to see why. Until he fucking all that. Oh, no. EC3 no. said in an interview that um, an no additional pedos? rule they have is no. Not no pedos. No Velveteen oh. Dream. <laughs> um, oh. So I'm guessing some like, shit went down. Legit just said no Velveteen Dream? Yeah. Just straight up? They just don't yes. like the guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah, so probably not. Um, which, I, it's probably for the best. The dude, by all accounts, seems oh. like he did some messed up shit, so... Who knows? Uh, who knows? Maybe. Um, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Speaking of messed up shit, The Undertaker oh. is starting a podcast. <laughs> the Taker cast. Well, have they announced the name of it yet? I don't know. Because no it, I saw this on Twitter, and I'll it better it fucking be. No, it better be Dead Man Talking. Okay? There's the, no way that's not, That's already a podcast, I'm pretty sure. It can't be, can it? There's no way. I think someone needs to okay. pull it up. See, the, the problem with, like, um these, like, wrestling podcasts is, like, the first, like, few episodes are really good, right? Because they have all these stories. Mm -hmm. But then, like, once they start running out of stories, it's just fan mail response time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's what with the Edge and Christian podcast and the Chris Jericho one, where it's, like, Ed all the episodes are just, Bruce hey, guys, Pritchard let me read too. your yeah. emails. I think what's awesome is Matt Hardy, what yeah. he's doing. Matt Hardy started his podcast, The Broken... I don't even remember what it's called, but it's an awesome, awesome podcast that he does with John Alba. And uh -huh. I think they already have it planned. It's going to be a finite number of episodes. And like, each episode focuses on a specific part of his career that they've already got mapped like, out. So like boyhood. Yeah, it's exactly like boyhood. That's the Dude, perfect. That took 12 years to make. Uh -huh. This podcast took 12 years to make. Exactly. So I think they're only going to do like a limited number of episodes and then just have it be like its own standalone thing. Um, but like something to wrestle with got so like repetitive after like the first three or four months. Um, it was tough. It was tough. So that was so long ago. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, what's happening recently that happened that's related to control your narrative. What's that? Um, former WWE superstar, Sarah Logan was announced for control your narrative shows. Woohoo. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool. I saw online yeah. she's part of some gun group, which is sick. Nice, yeah. I don't. I didn't really pay that much attention to it, but she likes guns, which good for her. Um, I, I back to the Undertaker's podcast because uh, I uh -huh. there's not much for me to say about it, but I honestly can't think of something I'm less interested in. Like I should be interested in an Undertaker podcast. I should appreciate it. Well, it sounds horrible. Is. I feel like there's so many stories to take her, you know? It'd be, like, really interesting. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's... Yeah. Like, I mean, the thing is, like, most of the stories, he kind of sounds like an asshole. 
It's like, I don't know how much he's going to skew the words, make him sound like better in these stories, you know? I have no clue. Like, Steven... I want to hear those locker room leader things where he does like oh the wrestler my court. God. Oh, yeah, all the wrestler court. Let's go. But, like, he makes himself sound like the good guy. Mm -hmm. And I want to story be like, yo, yo, Taker, um, I really want to be in this match. I want to go over. I want to be happy with the fans. Taker's like, no, bitch, fuck off. Yeah. Die or mm -hmm. something. I don't mm -hmm. really care. I would hope so. I would hope so. I used to pass, I'd be like, yeah. I don't know. The rest we can of only hope. Like. We'll have to simply tune in, Steven. We'll have to tune in once yeah. it comes out. Why are you in the bottom right side of your screen? Why I'm are not. you just letting Dax stare? Okay, it's Why concerning. Not? He's not just staring. Well, He's well. taking photos now. I see his camera there. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean? That's your favorite wrestler, Dax Hardwood. You no, you're right. Literally you're not wrong. For him, dude. You are not wrong. You are not wrong. Also, WWE announced that they are going to uh -huh. be having their first ever stadium show in the United Kingdom. Um, no since way. SummerSlam 92. It's been 30 years, Steven. What um, about the Australia show? Oh, believe it or not, Australia is not in the United Kingdom. What? But that's where Buddy Matthews won the Cruiserweight title. And I'm okay with that. And those are facts. This does not change the fact one is in Australia and the yeah. other is in Europe. Same thing. Okay. Um, thing, dude. It's going to be in Wales, um, in Cardiff, Wales, at whatever the fuck stadium they got you there. You know how many ticket printers they have? They got 52,000, right? No, 55,000. Yo, more than it's any really WrestleMania. Good. Crazy. Insane. Crazy, crazy, crazy. And I think it's happening, I think, of like an AEW pay per view, too, right? Like the week of? Or something like that? Oh, is it? Know. That's yeah. interesting. That's interesting. I saw there were crazy. rumors that AEW might be doing a super show with New Japan, like around September this year in Chicago. Because um, oh. on Dynamite this week, they Tony Khan uh, was announced to yeah. have a big announcement for next week, which is cool, which is great. I can't wait for the big announcement. But everyone's oh. speculating it's a a crossover super show with New Japan, which could be cool, you know? Exciting. Exciting. I think so. Do you think that's when they have Kenny come back? Kenny's supposed to come back like a while ago, right? <gasps> they can have him come back and fight Taguchi. Yo, this is a match. Fight evil, dude. That'd be sick. Yo, don't ever slander evil. Yeah. Evil is legitimately, unironically amazing. Okay? Yeah. I'll take, dude. Dude, evil is awesome. You see his finger lasers? You don't have finger lasers. I'll take, dude. Dude, have you seen his action figure? It's badass and only $60. <laughs> It's only $60, dude. Mm -hmm. Only or evil action $60 figure. for my evil action figure. Okay? Uh, yeah, dude. Steven, evil's cool. I don't know how to express that to you. He's a yeah. former IWGP heavyweight champion. I mean, it makes you feel better. He is engaged to Io Shirai, which is pretty cool. Is that true? Yeah. There's no way. Yes. Evil yes, and way. Doesn't one live in Japan and one in America? I was wondering, like, how does that work? Yo, good for motherfucking evil. That's how do they crazy. Date? Io Shirai is engaged to wrestler evil. That's so awesome. It's insane, dude. Oh my god. Evil. You know what this means? What? Does evil it mean? is going to be. I was going to say All Elite soon, but that's inaccurate. He's going to be NXT no. soon. NXT 2.0 soon. What are they renaming evil? Because Vince doesn't want to use indie names anymore, or their real names. Ooh, that's a great question. Oh, I think I got I it. I want it. What is it going to be? <laughs> Mad. Mean. <laughs> could, could it be? It's, it's mean! Oh my god! Mean has entered the NXT 2.0 arena! And it's just him on the ramp shooting finger lasers. <laughs> That'd be so cool. Um... I really like this new thing where they're doing it because it's what TNA does, but it's the WWE, so it's funnier. What are you talking about? All the name changes. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. I wonder what's going to happen if, like, former indie wrestlers go back to the Fed? What mm -hmm. are the names going to be? Are they going to stay the same? Or are they going to change? Former really indie know. wrestlers? In what sense? Um, like, like, what if, like, Swerve comes back, right? Do they mm -hmm. call him Swerve again or is there something new? No, they just call like, him Top Dalla. That, well, because Swerve was never his name in WWE. It was always his nickname. He was Isaiah Swerve Scott, oh, you know? I so see, he'd just yeah. be Isaiah Scott. <laughs> the <air is> Swerve. <laughs> you can't Fuck get you, rid of the one thing he has. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck your middle name. Dude. Fuck. Fuck, fuck. I was listening, by the way, to the Blake to uh, a Blake Christian interview uh, that he was doing Why? with Denise Salsa. Because I, 
I was interested. I saw that he did an interview with Denise Salcedo. I was like, huh. I've never heard this man talk. Let me listen to him. He seems like such a nice dude. I'm so happy for Cora Jade, you know? Like, if it like can't be friend. you that's her boyfriend, at least it's Blake Christian. At least Blake is a really chill dude. You know? Yeah, he seems pretty awesome. He seems pretty awesome. We love you, Blake. We can get him on the podcast, right? Legit, Mike. We, we, <laughs> we might be like able $2. to. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Watch a Blake Christian match. I saw his TikTok the other day. He has TikTok? Yeah, I found this TikTok. He has like 2 million views on a spot you did where he jumped through a door on the Briscoe Brothers. Yo. Are we following yeah. him with our following Lucha account? We are very Let's much following him. Go. Hit him up in those DMs, Steven. Okay? Yo, Blake. I like, your ep I like what you did in that one match we saw weeks ago, bro. It was Yo. sick. Yo, it was so sick. It was so sick. He's he's pretty awesome. I brought him up for a reason. Um, was it name change stuff? I I guess I don't, he was Trevor, released from WWE Trevor, in November. Trevor Bleak, you mean? Trevor? Is that his name? Trevor Bleak. Yeah, I think that was his name. They're both named Trevor. Trevor? We have two boys named Trevor. No, no, that was his. That was his NXT name. He had a different name in NXT. Yeah, it was like something Trevor. I think it was Trevor Bleak. Why? That's so fucked up. They named the guy Trevor Bleak, but they wouldn't let Cameron Grimes keep Trevor Lee, which is literally yeah. two letters away. Let me look it up, actually. It might not be Trevor Bleak. Let me see. Let's look it up. What's his name again? It can't be Trevor Bleak. It's Blake Christian. Christian. Blake. Um, his NXT name was Trey Baxter. That's pretty bad. I mean, like, Trey I... Trey Baxter uh. has entered... Raw. Ew. What? <laughs> Trey Baxter is all elite. Wow. I but they I Trey by itself isn't the horrible name. It well yeah. it's not good either. Fuck. I thought Paul London was a pretty sick name. Yeah. I'm just waiting for Madcap Moss to be Madcap, because that's gonna be awesome, okay? Madcap is here Yo. for a reason, guys. Let's I, go. Do you think they're gonna push Madcap to be like their next guy? Like they're kind of building him up already, right? Like against, Madcap like, to Pat beat Roman. Corbin. Yo. Oh my gosh. Madcap Roman WrestleMania 39. Yo, it's Mr. And Mr. Andrew versus the universe. The what's it? The Ulu Championship title. Mr. Andrew. Which man will prevail? Who the fuck yeah, is he... Mr. Andrew? Andrew the Giant. Andrew the Giant. <gasps> yeah, oh. Oh my God, you're so right. Winner, dude. Oh my God, you're so right. I didn't know they call them Mr. Andrew. I missed that memo. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> I love how like um all the Andre the Giant battle winners have to like carry a statue of them. Hell yeah. <laughs> I thought it was cool like when Baron Corbin did it. I thought that helped yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit out of people with it. Hell yeah. That's how we debuted. Yeah, yeah. That was his main roster debut. Was the the wow. Mania Andre match, Andrew match. Sorry. Um, Pretty boring his first year yeah a little bit yeah. a little bit well no his first oh. year is when he fought Kalisto in the chairs match so oh. i think when he shaved that's when he got really really cool as constable corbin yeah or boring you know other people what the hell? i've always king, dude. had a very my soft king. spot for baron corbin and every time i, I think he's, to him in an interview i, just I love him he's, he's so funny because his whole gimmick NXT was just beating up indie wrestlers <laughs> which is like so sick Let's go. And yeah. legit, like Anything? in NXT when he teamed uh -huh. up with Rhino, I bring it up a lot, but I liked that team. I thought they were badass together. Right. I did. And Corbin? Yeah. It's awesome. It really is. It really and he has a really good theme song. Not anymore. But his theme song was sick when he you had know, it. How was it that long ago that fucking Rhino and Heath Slater were tag team champions? That was incredible. And the fashion Yo. police were there. Fuck. <sighs> Yo. What the well, hell, Steven? We can't reminisce in the past anymore, even though that's what our podcast is about. I guess so. We have to look forward um, to the future. Tony Khan's big announcement maybe. next week on Dynamite. Maybe um, next week, another podcast episode, maybe. Yo. Maybe. Let's go. We will be back next week, Steven, with another review and recap, uh, some lore keeping of Lucha Underground, some more events in 2015, and most importantly, well, no, maybe not most importantly, but importantly, more current events. Um, otherwise, is there anything hey, else you want to you want to talk about, Steven, or are we good? Um, hail Sabin. Good night. Wow. wow.